Justice and Human Rights and Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes and Laws. First, I'd like to acknowledge again the presence of our resource persons, Dean Nilo Divina. Magandang maga po. And uh, we really appreciate your patience in attending each and every hearing of this committee. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maraming salamat po, Dean. <coughs> Attorney Irvin Joseph Avella. Good present. morning, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Attorney Arthur Capili. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. The very Reverend Father Erminio de Gohoy, who sent uh, his regrets, but uh, he will be represented by <coughs> Director Maria Socorro Guanhing. Good morning, Ma'am, good morning Honor. po. <coughs> Judge Philip Aguinaldo. Are you around? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Jonathan Santos. Supinas were served to the following fraternity members, Mr. Arvin Balag. I guess you're present because you're Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Ralph Trangia. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Min Wei Chan. Are you around? Uh, Comsec kindly take note because they were issued subpoena, or he was issued subpoena, and if he's not around, then at the proper time, a motion may be in order to order his arrest. Mr. Mark Anthony Ventura, are you around? Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Axel Mundo Hipe. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Mr. Oliver Jan Audrey Onopre. Good, Good morning. morning, Your Honor. Mr. Joshua Joriel Makabili. Is it Toriel or Joriel? Uh, Mr. Minway Chan. Okay. How about uh, Mr. Makabili? Are you around? No. <coughs> Ms. Present. You are Mr. Makabili? Mr. Mr. Makabali po. Ah, Makabali. Mr. Rani Rafael Santiago. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Mr. Daniel Hans Matthew Rodrigo. Good morning, po, Your Honor. Good morning. Mr. Carl Matthew Villanueva. Okay. Mr. Aaron Salientes. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Marcelino Bagtang. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Simon Padro. Good morning, po. Good morning. Mr. Jose Miguel Salamat. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Jed Villanueva. Around? No. Mr. Milfren Alvarado. Please come forward just to identify yourself. Mr. Daniel Ragos. Mr. Ragos, you're not around. Mr. Sakari Abulencia. Mr. Abulencia, not around. Mr. Dave Felix. Where are you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Attorney Alston Kevin Anarna. Good morning, sir. Good morning, attorney. I am Attorney Irineo Anarna. Alston Kevin Anarna was here earlier, but he called me here to rush up to the hospital because his wife is uh, about to give birth. Okay. She, she was due to give birth as early as November 4, Your Honor, and he had to rush to the hospital because that is his first baby. Anyway, we wish them well, Attorney. <coughs> Mr. Nathaniel Ano, Attorney Cecilio Jimeno. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Attorney Marvi Abo. Good morning, Attorney. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Edsel Canlas. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Henry Pablo Jr. Good morning, Attorney. 
Attorney Guy Le Dante Acusar, Karaan II. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. You are Attorney Pablo. No? Yes, sir. Attorney Karaan II. Attorney Gerald. Good morning, Tristan. Your Honor. Yeah, good morning. Attorney Gerald Tristan Villaroman. Attorney Villaroman. Ah, okay. Kindly introduce, uh, identify yourself lang. Attorney Villaroman, Your Honor. Thank you. Good Attorney Arnel Berbardo. Berbardo. You are Attorney Berbardo. Ganda maga po. Kindly identify yourself na lang for the record. I am Attorney Arnel A. Bernardo. Your Bernardo? Honor. Yes, sir. Not Berbardo. Attorney Eric Fentes. Attorney Fentes. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Eric Fentes, Your Honor. Attorney Alfonso Bersosa. Please identify yourself for the record. Attorney Bersosa, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Ronald Cheng. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Jason Adolfo Rubinos. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning. Mr. Martin Alex Bose. Sir Bose. Mr. Jem Arsiga Dimakulangan. Mr. Dimakulangan, are you around? No. Mr. Leo Anselmo Lalusis. Not around. Mr. John Robin Ramos. Not here. Mr. Kim Cyril Roque. Mr. John Paul Solano. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. And your lawyer is here, Tony Smaked. Good morning, sir. Mr. Antonio Trangia. Are you around? Good morning, Your Honor. Mrs. Rosemary Trangia. Mr. Romeo Laboga. Mr. Laboga, not around. Miss Nina Ruem Bonsol. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning. Police Chief Superintendent Joel Napoleon Coronel. Good right. morning, Your Honor. Secretary Aguirre, represented by P.G. Catalan, Jr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Attorney Maria Cristina Layusa. Good, Good morning, morning Your Honor. Any representative from the Commission on Human Rights? Please come forward. Any rep? Can you identify yourself? Attorney Parahuna from the CHR. Any representative from the NBI, from the National Bureau of Investigation, kindly identify yourself. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Rosemary C. Trangia. Rosemary, ah, okay. Good morning, ma'am. Attorney Emerson Akende, Legal Education Board. Present, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Attorney Cesar Bacani from the NBI, NCR. Oh, yeah. Dean Solidad Derequito Mawis. Mr. Horacio and Carmina Castillo. Good morning, Your Honor. Sir, Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, po. <coughs> Attorney, no. From the Chinese General Hospital, Mr. John Lim. Are you around? Ah, nandi. A Dr. John Lim. Dr. Clarice Cladera. Dr. Nestor Garcia. Good 
morning, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Mark Chua. Good morning, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Ms. Shirley Baluyot. Mr. Philip Beltran. Attorney Ferdinand Rogelio. Attorney Ferdinand Rogelio. Good morning, Your Honor. I, I remember you're occupying that seat. Kindly occupy the same. Uh, Your Honor, may I be allowed to uh, accompany my client? Uh, you, you're representing your client? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Attorney Alan Christopel Agati. Please identify yourself for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Attorney Alan Christopher Agati. Attorney or former Congressman Edwin Wee. Yeah, Uy, Wee. Pareho lang yan. Sa Chinese. Wala si Attorney, Congressman. Dr. Maria Cecilia Lim. Here, Your Honor. Hi. Good morning, ma'am. Anyway, the chair wishes to acknowledge the presence of my distinguished colleague, uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Good morning, sir. Now, if some quarters perceive this committee as taking sides in, this, in its proceedings, it is only because we're siding with the truth. Nothing less, nothing more. And bashing and cursing some members of this committee this chairman included through social media will not help your case any, at least as far as this forum is concerned. So we've been here, uh, this is the third hearing, and of course, you're free to express whatever opinion you have uh, in this committee's proceedings, pero it will not help your case any as far as this forum is concerned if you keep on bashing some of us. Also, the chair wishes to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Subiri, the author of the privileged speech or this one, uh, dated September 20, 2017, that uh, triggered this uh, committee hearing or this proceeding. Having said that, <coughs> with the indulgence of my colleagues, I would like to propound questions to Mr. John Paul Solano. With your indulgence, sir. <coughs> Mr. Solano. Did we hear you right when you stated that Atyo had a pre-existing heart condition prior to the hazing that he suffered? Yes, Your Honor. And what is your basis for saying that? Uh, Your Honor, my basis po yung sa death certificate and medical legal po ng MPD. Okay. Would you know if those who performed the rites did a pre-initiation medical checkup? Hindi ko po alam, Hindi alam. Or... Did you have knowledge if they secured a medical certificate from a physician before subjecting Atyo to the grueling initiation rights? Hindi ko rin po alam yun, Honor. How about the others? Anybody who would care to answer that question? Meron ba nag-secure ng medical certificate or medical check-up on Atyo before you subjected him to the rights, the final initiation rights? Wala. You cannot produce any. Walang medical certificate, walang pre-initiation check-up conducted on the person. Okay, that's clear enough. Now, Mr. Solano, do you know what neurogenic shock is? Uh, judging by the definition po, siguro. Ano ang Pero definition ng neurogenic personal. shock? It's a neural shock po regarding, regarding po. Which, is, which means in plain and simple language, Nag-shock lang po dahil po sa rapid po na ano, pag-send pag ng impulses ng neuron. Induced by? Hindi ko po sure, Your Honor. Some modified nervous factors, di ba? And since hindi ka sigurado sa sagot mo, I'll tell you that extreme pain as what happened in the conduct of hazing or yung conduct ng hazing kay Atyo cause neurogenic shock. How? By overexciting the parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system. Alam mo ba yung parasympathetic nervous system? Baka po nakalimutan ko na. Nakalimutan mo na. 
uh, yun yung nag increase ng uh, tone and contractility of his smooth muscle and yun ang naging slow down ng heart rate. And that consists of a cranial and a sec uh, and sacral part, di ba? In other words, pag nag-drop yung, uh, yung blood pressure, yung heart rate, pwede mamatay, di ba? You may say that, Your Honor. No, I'm asking you. Ito yung nagre-result in a significant decrease in heart rate or slow heart action or bradic bradycardia. Alam mo mo yung bradycardia? Opo, Your Honor. Ano ibig sabihin ng bradycardia? Bumaba po yung ano, blood, uh, heart rate. Yung pulse rate, saka heart rate, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Which would cause death. Correct? Kasi nag-drop yung pulse rate, yung heart rate. Sad, uh, sudden drop could cause death, di ba? Ito yung, yung dangerous drop in blood pressure can also result in loss of consciousness, stroke, and cardiac arrest. Tama ba yun? And I will ask, uh, we invited some uh, authority in this regard, yung mga doktor, paki-comment lang mamaya ano, kung tama yung... Or in short, with or without the pre-existing heart condition, hazing could have precipitated the cardiac arrest. Tama? Uh, Your Honor, regarding po kasi dun sa nangyari kay Acho, wala pong idea. Kaya dun lang po ko nag-base. I'm asking you because nung nag-file ka ng counter of debit, ang ini-indicate po dun, uh, hindi hazing ang cost ng death ni Acho, kundi, di ba, you, you uh, mentioned a medical term, yung pre-existing heart condition. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, kasi po, yung reason ko po dun, Your Honor, wala naman po kasi akong idea dun sa nangyari sa kanya. Kaya nag-base po ako sa medical legal and uh, death certificate po. Wala naman po kasi ako nung time na yon. Anyway, are you aware or at least with the, uh, you can consult your lawyer, ano? Yung proximate cost principle. Alam mo ba ibig sabihin nun? Article 4, paragraph 1 of the revised penal code. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, okay. please. No, uh, you can. You can. Uh, you can only be consulted by your client. Oh, read out ko na lang yung uh, paragraph four, article one ng revised penal code. If the unlawful act caused or aggravated the heart condition, even assuming, of course, that at your head one, ano that caused his immediate death, you're still liable. Not you, but uh, those who participated at least. No? So, yun. So, ang tingin ko, no, being a layman, being not a lawyer, maski sabihin nyo pang merong pre-existing heart condition o wala, it won't fly as a defense. Anyway, with that, I would like to recognize uh, the, the members of this committee to propound their own questions. Senator Gatchelian, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to direct my questions to uh, the uh, star witness, uh, Mr. Ventura. Um, Mr. Ventura, nandun ba kayo during... Uh, nung nagkakaroon ng hazing kay Acho? Yes po, Your Honor. Ano ang position nyo dito sa grupong to? Uh, dati po akong officer po, pero dun po sa nangyari, sa uh, araw po na yun, wala na po akong position. Wala ka ng position? Yes po. Your Kailan Honor. huminto yung position mo? Uh, sometime sa August po, before po matapos yung August, mga third week po yun. August of? 2017 po, Your Honor. So, <laughs> hindi ka na officer at huminto ka na maging officer as of August of 2017? Yes po, Your Honor. Prior to August of 2017, ano ang position mo? Uh, ano po yun eh? After po ako mag-join po, Og sometime in August 2016, uh, I was appointed po interim secretary naman po. Okay. Tapos from August po, 2016 to November 2016 nung nagkaroon po ng election po, I was elected po na Master Initiator 2. 
So, ulitin natin na, August of 2016, you were appointed as secretary? Yes po. Till when? Uh, November po, mga second week po ng 2016. November of 2016? Yes po. And then, after November of 2016, you were elected as? Master Initiator 2 po. Master Initiator. Yes po. Hanggang August of 2017? Yes po. Tapos, yung ano po, Uh, sometime in July din po I was assigned as secretary din po kasi ako po yung pinakamalapit po sa UST and ako po yung nautusan magayos ng documents para pumunta-punta po sa office So, so for, from, from November 2016 to July of 2017 you were a master initiator as well a, uh, sorry up uh, November 2016 to July of 2017, Master Initiator ka? And hanggang August po. Hanggang August 2017? Apo. But you were concurrently appointed <laughs> as secretary, secretary din po. nung July? July po. Ano ba ang uh, responsibilidad ng uh, Master Initiator? Yung sa, sa part ko po as Master Initiator po, ako po yung assistant po ng MI1 po, Master Initiator 1 po. You were the assistant of MI1? Yes po. And uh, being the assistant, do you have the capability of instructing? Uh, meron din po, pero ang nasusunod po is 1 din po. Si MI1, okay. si Master Initiator 1, siya ang nag, uh, nagbibigay ng instruction? Yes po, pag sa doon po, pag may pat meron po kaming service po. So, ano ang mga instructions na binibigay ni MI1? Siya ang, siya ang nag-iisip ng mga instruction na ibinibigay? Actually po, hindi po siya yung, par, ano lang po, yung naggagabay po kami. So, si Master Initiator 1, ang nag sa, sa kanya nanggagaling yung instruction? In yung other words? Yung decision po. Opo. In decision? Kasi po, uh, Your Honor, yung sa instruction po, same lang din po kasi yung mga pinagdadaanan po namin. Wala pong nagbabago. Saan na, uh, anong mga instruction na binibigay na, ni MI1? Yung ano po na... Bigyan mo kami ng example. Pagsasabihin po sa amin, utusan mo yung neophyte. Yan, ganun po. Sabihin so for example, dito sa nangyari kay Acho, may pitong steps, no? Uh, ilan dun sa mga steps, pinapalo yung daliri. No? In iba ay... Uh, Uh, pinapainom ng uh, ng uh, egg white. No? Um, ito saan nang gagaling itong mga instructions na ito? Uh, Adot na po yan. Doon po sa time na po yan. Doon na po sa master initiators po. So siya nag-isip nitong pitong, pitong proseso at siya rin ang nag-instruct nag gawin nitong pitong proseso? Yung, ano po, Your Honor, yung pag-iisip po, uh, ayan po yung proseso po namin. So, hindi po siya yung bumuo po ng proseso na yan para sa week na yon or para sa batch na yon Sino ang bumuo ng proseso? Naabutan na po namin yan, ganun na po. So, tradisyon na ito? In other words, pwede si bang sabihin ganun? Maaari po kasi pagkaano po, same lang din po kami na pinagdaanan po. Sige. Um, Nag-execute nag ka ng, ng affidavit, tama? Yes po, Your Honor. Pwede mo ba ikwento sa amin yung nangyari base dun sa affidavit mo? Yes po. Sige, go ahead. Yung ano po? Umpisahan mo sa, nung uh, doon sa affidavit mo, inumpisahan mo doon sa pagkakilala mo kay Acho, and then all the way hanggang nag-meet kayo sa Novotel. Sa Novotel. Kwento mo nga step by step. Uh, yun, wala Total, po, nasa, wala, wala nasa po ako sa Novotel po. Oh, hanggang doon sa, uh, hanggang doon sa dinala si Acho sa ospital. Yun yata yung uh, last na nakita mo siya eh. Apa. So, ikwento mo, dahil nasa affidavit mo naman to, ikwento mo yung uh, isinulat mo sa affidavit. Yes po. Yung ano po, uh, yung week po na na-meet ko po siya, prior po, na mangyari yun, mat Monday po. And then, pa, kahit nakalibo pa absence po ako, pumupunta po kasi ako ng flat library po namin. So, pagdating ko po doon, sabi, oh, meron tayong Meron tayong bagong neophyte. 
So, inaano ko naman po, nag-aantay po. Tapos nung dumating po siya, casual lang po. Hindi, hindi pa naman po siya yung actual start ng service namin. So, kwentuan na, binibiro-biro ko po siya. Okay, nakakamusta ko po. Bakit, bakit siya sumali? Ano yung gusto niya? Sino yung... Frat library ito. Apo, pumunta po okay. siya doon. Sige, go ahead. Tapos, Your Honor, please. Uh, uh, can I uh, be given a chance to speak, Your Honor? Um, um, Senator uh, Gajalian, I, I forgot na sig siguro pa-walkthrough muna tayo kay uh, PG Catalan yung status ng preliminary investigation before we even proceed to uh, asking our questions. Uh, okay, Your Honor, uh, PG, please. Good morning, Your Honors. Um, I'll be reading the case status uh, update on this uh, case uh, MPD Manila Police this uh, department and spouses Castillo versus John Paul Solano et al. Uh, the panel being conducted, uh, the, the preliminary investigation is being conducted by uh, a panel chaired by uh, Assistant State Prosecutor Susan Villanueva and as members, uh, Prosecution Attorney Wendell Bendoval and Prosecution Attorney Honey Rose Delgado. A total of about uh, 42 respondents are named in the original and supplemental complaints. Uh, they are as follows. John Paul Solano, Arvin Balag, Min Wei Chan, Mark Anthony Ventura, Axel Munro Hipe, Oliver John Audrey Onofre, Joshua Juriel Makabali, Jason Adolfo Rubinos, Ralph Tangia, Jose Miguel Salamat, Rain Santiago, Carl Matthew Villanueva, Marcelino Bactang, Rosemary Tangia, Antonio Tangia, Daniel Hans Matthew Rodrigo, Aaron Salientes, Simon Padro, Chuck Ciazar, Leonard Brian Galicia, Alex Bose, Leo Lalusis, Robin Ramos, Nathan Anama, Dini Divina, Arthur Capilli, Vicente Garcia, the incorporators of Aegis Judis Foundation, William Merginio, Cesar Tirol II, Oscar Ko, Alexander Flores, Alvin Di Sanco, Emmanuel Velasco, Henry Pablo, Gabriel Robiniol, Michael Joseph Fernandez, Alan Christopher Agati, Paulino Yusi, Arnel Bernardo, Edwin Uy, and uh, John Dos and Jane Dos. To date, the uh, panel has received all of the respondents counter affidavit or uh, answer. Uh, complainants were directed to submit the reply affidavit on the 9th of November this year. All respondents are set to submit the rejoinder affidavit on the 16th of November 2017. The submission of both reply and re rejoinder are set without need of formal investigation although the panel may opt to uh, conduct a clarificatory hearing when uh, the need arises. Um, the case uh, is submitted for resolution. Oh, the, the, the panel uh, would be uh, uh, resolving the case within a reasonable period, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> Last November 3, respondents, namely Alex Bose, Nathan Anama, and Robin Ramos, also uh, or likewise submitted their counter affidavits. That would be all, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, PG Catalan, hindi laman lahat ng nabagit ninyo present during the initiation rights, hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. So, Please. ano po Opo. yung basihan ng pagkasama ng mga iba na hindi naman present? Uh, uh, Attorney Divina, for example. What could be the basis of his inclusion 
do sa preliminary investigation. I understand he already submitted his counter affidavit also. They were mentioned, Your Honor, in the supplemental uh, complaint affidavit submitted by the uh, uh, complainant Manila Police Department, Your Honor. So, limitado lang kayo do, doon sa mga na-mention do sa complaint affidavit. Outside of the of those mentioned in the complaint affidavit, uh, hindi nyo na sinama? Hindi na po. O, included lang po lahat ng uh, ay ang lahat ng sinabit ng complainant ang uh, Manila Police Department, Your Honor. Pakiulit nga is uh, the, uh, the name of Attorney Ronald Cheng is included. Just uh, no. kasi I understand. Min Wei Chan? Yeah, no, no. Uh, Cheng. Yung, uh, yung taga Supreme Court. Wala. Wala, wala, po, wala po dito. Uh, may we hear from the MPD? Wala kayong holdings kay attorney. I understand. I recall, very prominent yung pag-mention ng pangalan niya, eh, di ba? During the hearing, at least. Yes, sir. In the uh, case we have filed before the Department of Justice, out of the 42 respondents mentioned earlier by the Prosecutor General, only 18 of those were indicated or included in the complaint by the MPD. I understand the rest uh, were included by uh, the family of Acho Castillo as correspondents, Your Honor. So, uh, I'm, I'm asking about uh, Attorney Cheng. Cheng. No, sir. He's not included in the case filed by the MPD. Why? Kaya? Bakit? Uh, at that time, we initiated the case before the DOJ. We have no yet evidence against him at that time. And he was still unidentified or his identity is not yet known to us or his involvement. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, one more, one very brief interjection in, rela in relation to the uh, uh, questions propounded by Attorney Sherwin. K. Mark Ventura. I have a copy of your constitution ano, and bylaws ng Aegis Juris under Article 6, Section 3. Sabi mo kasi natapos ka noong August 17? Yes, Pa. Okay. Term of office. The term of office of the members of the Concilium shall commence on the 16th day of December and shall end one year thereafter or when the new set of officers shall have been elected and assume office. Would you confirm this? Yung ano po, yes po. Doon po parang kinikilala so, po every 16th po. day of December. Opo, doon po. And sabi mo, as of August 17, wala ka na. Yes po. So, why is that? Yung ano po kasi, Your Honor, uh, pag officer po kasi, concilium po kasi, dapat po enrolled po, kayo, enrolled po kami sa UST. Eh, by that time po, nag-file po ako ng leave of absence ng August 2. Because po sa recurring illness ka po, gastritis. Yung ano po kasi yun, ang hindi po ako naka-enroll po nung first sem po, itong taon po na to. And, uh, I cannot quite understand that, but uh, I'll yield the floor to Senator Gatchalian. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Your uh, Honor, please. Uh, uh, precisely the reason, Your Honor, I just want to inform Your Honors that uh, Mark Anthony Ventura was merely provisionally admitted to the Witness Protection Program last October 24. And uh, his uh, case would still be evaluated and analyzed until he would uh, be completely admitted as such. Secondly, Your Honor, all the statements that uh, he mentioned or the affidavits which he gave are uh, very confidential, Your Honor. It's confidential in nature. I just want to inform the Your Honors uh, that we might have some complications uh, later on. In Honor. other words, he is being presented not as a plain witness or he's not being charged, di ba? Uh, Your Honor, no, he applied and was provisionally admitted provisionally to the admitted witness uh, protection program. And even if he is uh, already admitted, Your Honor, I'm afraid that he cannot testify before this court as of this time because his uh, testum testimony is... Uh, confidential in nature, Your Honor. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the confidentiality of uh, his testimony. Ano? Ang tanong ko lang is, di ba ang, ang, proce ang procedure is you only have to move, no? make the proper motion sa court if he can be discharged as a state witness. That's why I'm asking, or I was asking earlier, is he being presented or is he being treated as a plain witness or one of those charts and then later on you will ask the court by way of a motion to discharge him as a state witness. Ano ba status niya? There are actually two modes, Your Honor, wherein a uh, 
uh, witness can testify as a state witness. Uh, one mode, Your Honor, is uh, if after the indictment of a respondent who is now considered as an accused in court and before the prosecution rests uh, its case, the prosecution can file a motion or move that this person be discharged and be made a state witness. Of course, Your Honor, all the... Uh, and only the court can rule on the, his discharge. Yes, Your Honor, but after a hearing, Your Honor, of course. the uh, person who would be testifying as a state witness would uh, prepare or make his uh, sworn statement as well as other uh, evidence or pieces of evidence would be required by the court. And after uh, hearing, the judge will decide whether or not to discharge the accused and uh, make him as a state witness, Your Honor. So I go back to my previous another, question. Another mode, Your Honor, mm. is under the witness protection program yes. in which he will apply and be qualified as a state witness. That's correct. Of course, all the circumstances such as, number one, that the uh, defense in which he would be testifying is a grave offense. Secondly, that uh, there is an absolute necessity for his uh, testimony and uh, he must appear to be, or he must at least not, not to be, not appear not to be the most guilty, and he had not uh, previously convicted of a, an offense or crime involving moral turpitude. And uh, his, uh, his testimony should also be material, very material. Can be corroborated in uh, all its, its material, material points, points yes, Your Honor. So is there corroboration at this point? Uh, we cannot uh, answer, Your Honor, with, with due respect, because uh, anyway, he would still I, I be evaluated. My, this, uh, I, I'll go back to my previous question. So as of now, he is not being treated as a plain witness, He's, right? As of now? Yes, Your Honor. So he speak. is still considered as a respondent, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much, Senator Gatselian. With your permission, Senator Subir is asking to interject. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask for a one-minute suspension so that we can just discuss? This uh, uh, hearing is suspended for one minute? General. Just one minute? Uh? Yes, sir. Okay. PG, uh, PG June, PG join lang sandali. May, may clarify lang kami.
this this hearing is resumed. The chair acknowledges the presence of the vice chairperson of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, Senator Grace Po. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, uh, Senator Gachalian, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, um, Mr. Chair, instead of uh, requesting the narration of Mr. Ventura, I will just ask uh, some questions, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Ventura, Nandoong ka ba nung uh, nangyari yung uh, hazing? Excuse me po, Your Honor. Uh, okay lang po ba? Kakonsult ko lang po yung lawyers ka po. Please, go ahead. Sa, ano. Mr. Chairman, before Mr. Ventura would answer, we just like to put on record na si Secretary Vita Guinea mismo nagsalaysay ng mga sinabi mo sa sa iyong sinumpang sinalaysay. So, you don't have to worry. Uh, the Honorable DOJ Secretary himself had already said that you were there, hazing took place, etc., etc. Maybe you can answer simply with yes or no or uh, give a few of, uh, comments on on the questions of uh, Senator Gachalian, rather than to invoke your right to um, self-incrimination, because na salaysay naman ni Secretary lahat sa TV. Eh. So maybe without giving too much detail, yes or no, uh, so just a suggestion to our uh, witness, uh, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your honor. Before you answer, the chair failed to acknowledge the presence of the representative of the BID. Deputy Commissioner Amy Neri. Good morning, morning Your Honor. Please proceed, Senator. Mr. Ventura, have you consulted your um, your counsel? Okay. Yung sa question niya po, yes po. So, nandoon ka during the hazing? Yes po. Nandoon ka nung, uh, anong oras ka na nandoon? Na nandoon. From 8 p.m. po. So from the start, nandoon ka? Yes po. Sino-sino yung mga nandoon? I'm sorry po, Your Honor. Uh, although I'm very willing po to tell the truth and nothing but the truth po, but sa ano po kasi hindi po inadvisean po kasi ako na hindi po magbanggit po nung iba pong details po specifically po yung mga names po at dun po sa proper court po I will comply po Actually you already executed an affidavit na nakasalaysay doon yung mga pangalan uh, and then again na nagkaroon ng press con si Secretary Aguirre narrating what you basically wrote down in your affidavit but um, I would respect the uh, consensus earlier. No, nag-usap po sa pukami. I'd respect that. Um, I'll proceed to the next question, na lang, no, para hindi tayo na ho hold. Um, doon sa nangyaring hazing, uh, natandaan ko meron kang sinulat doon na mga proseso, no? Yes, pa. At uh, yung pinakamatindi dito sa proseso na ito ay uh, yung paddling. Tama? Ito yung pinaka nakita ko, pinaka uh, pinakamasakit para sa isang neophyte. Tama po ba? Yung ano po, sa opinion ko po sa akin po yung sa braso po. Tsaka yung sa braso? Ay po yung sa akin. So sa opinion mo, yung, yung sa braso ang pinaka masakit Yes po. Uh, anong ginawa sa braso ni Acho? Sorry po, Yara. Hindi ko na po pwede i-detail po yun. Uh, siguro pwede mo bang i-kwento uh, na lang na after uh, itong 
ginawa sa kanya, sa braso niya, uh, ano yung condition niya pagtapos? Yung condition niya po, ano po, pagod po, ha po. Pero responsive po siya nun, after po nun. Nagsasalita pa siya? Yes po. Uh, nakausap mo siya mismo? Yes po. At uh, anong, anong mga sinabi niya? That uh, made you appear, made you think that okay pa siya? Ano po, uh, pinap- sinasabi ko po sa kanya na kaya niya po yun, yung proseso po nung gabi na yun. And lagi ko po sa kanya pinapaalala yung sinasabi niya sa akin tuwing nag-uusap kami na ang, for- ang gusto niya kasi is purpose. Every time niya kausap ako, lagi lang niya sinasabi was purpose. Parang hinahanap niya yung purpose niya sa buhay niya. And every time na mag-uusap kami, constant reminder ko po sa kanya na yung purpose na yun, hindi kami magbibigay sa kanya. Magsisimula yun sa kanya. Pero diretsyo mo siyang kausap? Opo. Um, at yan ang sinasabi niya sa'yo? Lag, lagi ko po siya dire-remind po dun sa goal niya po na before po kasi sinasabi niya sa akin was yung purpose niya po. Okay. Dito, again, no, I, I broke down kasi parang seven seven uh, processes yung mga dinaanan niya. Next dito sa suntok, ano yung pinaka masakit para sa isang neophyte? Um, sa opinion ko po yung ano po, uh, yung sa last part na po, yung sa paddling po. Sa paddling ang uh, pinaka masakit? pinakamasakit. Yung susunod po. Bago, sa pa, bago siya pumasok dito sa paddling, ano yung condition ni Acho? Same din po, pero mas, yun nga po, mas pagod na po siya. Bago po magsimula po yung process na yun. At uh, ilan ang uh, pumalo kay Acho? I'm sorry po, di ko po pwede sabihin po. Hindi, ilan lang, ilan tao lang, di ba? Nakasulat dito yata, lima yung kanyang uh, tinanggap na palo eh. Pero Bali, ilan, ilan, ang, ilan ang pumalo sa kanya? Apat po. Apat yung pumalo. Kasali ka ba doon sa pumalo? Hindi po, Your Honor. Uh, after nitong, uh, ano, after uh, doon sa paddling, dito na nagkaroon ng problema si Acho, tama? Yes po. Ano nangyari after? No? Ah. As, yung ano po? After ng paddling, may nangyari na siya, bumagsak na siya. Apo. Pwede mo ba ikwento kung uh, after nung uh, pagbagsak niya, ano nangyari sa kanya? Sorry po, hindi ko po pwede i-discuss po. Um, Pasensya na po. Meron bang, t- meron bang mga taong uh, nagbigay sa kanya ng medical... Uh, attention ano mga nangyari after bumagsak siya yung ano po ano naman po inasistihan po siya para maiupo noon nakaupo naman siya opo inupo pero ano po. na yung kondisyon ng pagkaupo niya yung pagkaupo niya po ano na po hindi na po siya ganun ka responsive hindi na siya ganun ka responsive yes po And then, uh, from the time bumagsak siya, until from the time na dalawang beses siya dinala sa sasakyan, tama? Sorry pa, di ko po pwede i-discuss po, Your Honor. Sensya na po talaga. Um, from the time na lang na dinala siya, nung pinakahuli sa hospital, no? uh, gano'ng katagal yung interval na yon? Medyo matagal din po. Mga one hour, two hours. Mga ano rin po siguro. More or less. More or less po mga 30 to 40 minutes po. 30 to 40 minutes. Siguro po. And then at that time, nung yung, between the 30 to 40 minutes, ano ang ginagawa ng mga kasama mo? Yung inaassistihan po. Meron ba nagsabi na daling ka agad sa hospital? Meron din po. Uh, bakit hindi dinala ka agad sa hospital? 30 minutes, matagal yung interval. Asensya na po, di ko po maalap. Pwede mo naman sabihin, within that 30 minutes, anong dahilan bakit hindi dinala? 
kaagad sa hospital. Yung tao nag-collapse na, no, hindi na siya conscious. But may 30 minutes, but, but hindi instant, hindi nila sa hospital. May pumigil ba? Yung ano po, uh, yung first po na nag, nagratatel na po kami, then may takot din po. Okay. Pero ano yung, kwento mo lang yung 30 minutes na yun, ano, ano yung, uh, sino yung mga taong uh, involved no? doon sa kondisyon ni Acho? Asensya na po yun, hindi ko, di ko po pwede i-kwento, salaysay po dito. Pero may pumigil sa pagdadala sa ospital. Yun lang ang gusto, gusto ko malaman. Dahil 30 minutes, matagal yun eh. Instinct ng isang tao, dapat daling ka agad pag mag sa ospital pag may bumagsak. Meron po. May pumigil? Meron po. Pangalawang tanong ko, bakit hindi dinala sa pinakamalapit na ospital? Hindi ko, ayun po, hindi ko po alam. Hindi mo na alam kung bakit dinala pa sa malayong ospital? Yes po. Sir, that's it for now. Senator uh, Subiri. Uh, by the way, uh, we'd like to express our sympathy sa mag-asawa again, ano? Kasi uh, I know you're struggling between relief and agony dahil, di ba, you hate to hear what you have always wanted to know. Di ba? Mahirap pakinggan ito. Pero ito naman yung gusto nyong in the first place na malaman kung ano talaga nangyari. So, Senator Subiri is recognized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and to, to second the motion of uh, Senator Ping Lakson on the family, uh, we know you're going through a lot, Mini and uh, Toti, and uh, Doc, and to gather with your your family and Nicole with us. I know it's a difficult path to take, but this is a path that we must take to find justice for Acho. And uh, just stay strong. We will see this to the end. At least we, the Senate, will make sure that we see this to the end. Uh, going to Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, I'll uh, address this to Mark Ventura. To Mark, I would like to repeat what I said in my statement no paglabas mo. Sabi ko, the pang of conscience is the thin line between beast and man. Let me repeat, the pang of conscience is the thin line between beast and man. Ang konsensya ng tao ay ang pagkakaiba natin sa hayop. Kaya saludo po ako sa iyo, Mark. I salute you. I know what you are doing is a very, very difficult thing to do. And um, I will not badger you with a lot of questions or I will not force you to, to uh, say things that are confidential at this point in time because I would like to keep the, the bullets, ika nga, ammunition close to the chest of the DOJ so that uh, we don't expose you to uh, countersuits as well. Pero saludo po ako sa'yo dahil you chose your conscience over misguided loyalty. You chose the law rather than to violate it. And I'd like to quote the oath that lawyers take. I quote, and this is uh, read after you pass the bar. I do solemnly swear that I will maintain allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. I will support the Constitution and obey the laws as well as the legal orders of the duly constituted authorities therein. I will do no falsehood nor consent to the doing of any in court. I will not wittingly or willingly promote or sue any groundless false or unlawful suit or give aid nor consent to the same I will delay no man for money or malice and will conduct myself as a lawyer according to the best of my knowledge and discretion with all good fidelity as well to the courts as to my clients yan po ang main thrust of your oath when you take the oath as a lawyer, and you chose to tell the truth rather than to twist the truth, Mr. Ventura. I salute you for that. Um, I believe, I believe you want justice to prevail in this case, and I thank you for your testimony. Tama na siguro yung mga tinanong kanina ni 
uh, Senator Gachalian dahil anyway, isinalaysay naman po ni Secretary Aguirre yung mga ibang nabanggit mo sa iyong uh, or the um, sworn statements. So, maganda po ang ginawa mo. Sana meron pa pong mga kasamahan ninyo na sumama dito and if you do this, I believe you know, eventually you'll become a good lawyer because lawyers are supposed to uphold the truth. Hindi naman dapat kayo ang mismo na nagko-conspire para matwist o mapalitan ang katotohanan. And that's why I feel that Mr. Mark Anthony Ventura will become a good lawyer one day. You know, I believe that uh, when these things come to a person, it is a test of character. It is a test of character. It will show good men from bad ones. It will show those who believe and uphold in the truth rather than those who want to remain as beasts and animals, which this society does not need anymore. Um, Mr. Chairman, with I, what I wanted to hear today really was the sworn testimony of Mark Ventura, but since we were given a copy and due to the confidentiality that uh, the Prosecutor General, of which I respect uh, deeply his uh, counsel, that we do not uh, release the um, the line by line uh, uh, statement of Mark Ventura. I withhold any more questions. I don't want to address these people here unless they have a change of heart. Uh, I am upset, uh, still upset at uh, Mr. Solano because sabi ko nga, hindi niya ginagago ang Senado. Nung sinabi niya namatay dahil sa pre-existing condition, ginago mo na yung buong bansa. Ginagago mo na yung buong bansa. You know, just call a spade a spade. Huwag mo nang dagdagan pang insulto ang pamilya Castillo na sinabi mo na namatay na lang siya dahil may heart condition or something that as Senator Ping had said, that does not hold water in any court as he quoted the uh, uh, penal code that even if you had or even if the, the victim had a pre-existing heart condition because of the agitation that was caused and following his death, it does not uh, have any excuse. You still committed the crime of hazing or they still committed the crime of hazing. Kaya huwag niyo nang dagdagan at insultuhin pa ang pamilyang Castillo. Uh, I would like now to end my um, brief statement, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, and maybe later I will ask the other uh, resource persons. I believe that Senator Grace will also has a very important question to ask. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, thank you, Senator Sibiri. Senator Grace po is recognized. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Nais kong klaruhin sa ating mga kababayan, ano, pag hindi man nasasagot ni Mr. Ventura yung ating mga katanungan, hindi dahil sa is invoking his right against self-incrimination, ito ay dahil merong ongoing na naimbestigasyon. Maraming salamat, Mr. Ventura, um, sa iyong mga salaysay. Pagamat hindi natin masasabi lahat dito, nakakalungkot, Mr. Solano, sapagkat nung umpisa, nandun ka sa kabila eh. Ikaw yung nagbigay sa amin ng konting pag-asa noon na sana mailahad na kung ano yung mga nangyari, pero mabuti na lang may isa pang lumabas. Um, dahil ang mga tanong natin ay hindi dahil sa mga nangyaring kaganapan, dahil hindi mo nga masasagot lahat, matanong ko na lang, siguro, umpisa natin sa ito. Yung yung mga naging abogado noong umpisa, hindi ba itong mga abogado mo na ito ay sina Attorney Ferdinand Rogelio at si Sino ba yung mga abogado mo noon? Sila ba yung dating mga miyembro ng Aegis Juris? Yes po, Your Honor. So, matanong ko, bakit mo pinalitan ang iyong counsel? Yung ano po, nakausap ko po kasi yung sa pamilya ko po. And ito po yung sinabi po nila sa akin. Na sabi po ng totoo. Yun lang po yung gusto namin. So, ang ibig sabihin, yung mga dating abogado mo, eh parang hindi kayo tinutulak na magsabi ng totoo? Hindi po sa ganun po. Pero yung ano po, mas palagay po ako sa bago ko pong abogado kasi tulad po na sinabi ko po, yung abogado ko po kayo, isa ko rin po siyang kapamilya po. Um, so, 
Alam ko ayaw mong mag uh, mambuko siguro no, lalo na mga nakasama mo. Pero parang malinaw ako na lang magsasabi para sa iyo na dahil ang abogado mo ay hindi galing sa ages juris ngayon, mas kumpiyansa ka na magsabi ng katotohanan. Opo. Okay. Um, doon din sa isang organisasyon, ano, kasi si Dean Devina, sinabi po ninyo na ang ages juris fraternity ay hindi na po recognized ng USD. Hindi ba? For this year, uh, yes, Your Honor, it's not recognized. So, matanong ko lang po kayo, bakit po nung August 2017 freshman orientation ay pinayagan na may representative ang ages juries? Hindi ba? Pag uh, orientation, doon nagre-recruit ng mga bagong sasali sa organisasyon. So, kung sila ay suspendido, bakit meron silang presence doon sa orientation? It's not the office, but Dean, uh, Your Honor, that uh, organized that uh, that conference or meeting. So who did? The Student Council, uh, Your Honor. So the Student Council did. Did you send any correspondence or letter informing the Student Council or the Students Affairs Office that Aegis Juris is indeed suspended and they should not be allowed to participate in any student activities? Your Honor, it's not the office of the dean that uh, determines the uh, recognized organizations, but the OSA, the Office of Student Affairs. So they would know the uh, organizations that are not recognized. And uh, the local uh, SWD, I mean the Social Welfare Development Board, headed by Judge Aguinaldo, conducts the orientation and makes it clear, or made it clear rather, that uh, there is only one, one uh, fraternity recognized for this year. Kasi, Dean, lahat yan parang palusot eh. Para sa akin, ikaw nagbigay ng direktibo, di ba? Na dapat sila ay suspendido. Uh, Your Honor, I, please allow me to take exception to the statement that papalusot po ako. Lahat po na sinabi ko sa committee nito ay puro katotohanan. Kahit ka lang po hindi ako nagsinungaling, wala pong uh, palusot na ginagawa po ako. Uh, nakita naman po, sinabi ko sa committee ang lahat Teka ng katotohanan po. Teka uh, Dean, Mawalang galang na po. Sagutin po ninyo yung tanong ko. Sensei na po, I just Hin had to take exception to the statement. Sinasabi ko parang hindi ko naman sinasabi nagpapalusot kayo. Matanong ko lang po, kayo nagbigay ng direktiba, hindi po ba, na dapat suspendido itong fraternity na to? Uh, as I said, Your Honor, it's not the Office of the Dean that determines who are the recognized organization, but the Office of Student Affairs. So, but did you make a recommendation that they should be suspended but after the brawl the office, that happened in Manila Hotel? It's the Office of Student Affairs that conducts or that evaluates rather whether or not for a So you had year, no opinion whatsoever, Dean, with the, regards to that? It's the Office of the Student Affairs that determines the uh, organization to be recognized. Mr. Senator, Senator Paul, Dean, as, you sorry. may want to ask the, he's present here, no? Yung, uh, si Mr. Jonathan Santos, siya yung... Uh, Now, this should appear uh, headed by Director Corey Guanhing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Ma'am, will you please answer this question directly? Because uh, the dean is supposed to be setting a good example also to the students, and he should be aware of what's happening uh, within uh, the college. But it is your responsibility, supposedly, to inform the student body of legitimate or the ones... Um, organizations that can actively recruit. Mm -hmm. So what happened here? No. Why was there a breakdown? There is actually a procedure that we follow for the recognition of organizations. So it starts with their coming up with certain requirements and we have a form for that. So these students are supposed to adhere to those requirements and then they are supposedly uh, signed, endorsed by the Father Regent, the dean, the student welfare and development coordinator, before these uh, papers are turned to us for final approval. So the freshman orientation that you were referring to was conducted in conjunction with the uh, plan of the university to conduct orientation among our students. So It's a regular thing so that happens. So Aegis Juris was present? during that yes. orientation. And because, can you tell me why? Yeah. Because all the organizations that apply for recognition 
are presumed to have regularity in terms of their papers. So it is acceptable based on... So they on were there to apply as a student organization? No. During the time that they conducted the orientation, it is presumed that all the papers and all organizations for that matter are in place. So that orientation was not meant for recruitment. But ma'am, yes. the day two, it says that uh, that organization, it's solely devoted for the organizations to give them the chance to explain thoroughly their mission and vision to the new breeds. So they're not supposed to recruit. They're not supposed to recruit. they can explain what yes. their mission and vision is. Yes, they See, can. It sounds yeah. contradictory yeah, because you're talking about your organization. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not getting names or ap accepting applications. But exactly, if you suspend an organization, they're still allowed to post on boards. Uh, um, meron pa nga dito. Kung, hindi, kung sila ay suspendido na, bakit pinapayagan pa rin sila na nagpo-post ng kanilang mga activities sa inyong, I, I, I don't know what it is, parang common bulletin. Okay. Yung mga ganon. So okay. exactly what happens to them uh, when they are suspended? Ano po kasi, uh, organizations, there are two classifications of organizations in USD. One is college-based, and that is where fraternities and sororities come in. And there's also university-based. And so if and when they posted anything on the board, it's not in my personal knowledge. So ma'am, tell me exactly. Having been suspended, this, or this um, fraternity, uh, what exactly... Uh, are the restrictions on them now? Okay. Because it seems may that there's I, none. May I do the chronology, if you will allow me, Your Honor? No, 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 no. Uh, the Very quickly on the chronology. Okay. But the um, yeah. The recognition is supposed to come mid-September. The orientation came first week of <coughs> August. And that is when they are presumed to have some, but the presumption of regularities in there. In other words, they are allowed to conduct activities. But activities are still supposed to have been uh, approved and rec recruitment is not one of them in fact there was a very strict memorandum that was issued by the student welfare and, uh, coordinator of the college not to recruit specifically among first year kasi ma'am ganito ha until the hazing incident mm -hmm. nandun pa nga they were allowed the use of the billboard USD Law's website um, I think they're still in, th they were in the website until after that, then they were removed. But that is not within the OSA's knowledge. It is just the accreditation of the organization, but postings are not within the. So, whose purview is that? It is supposed to be within the college and okay. under the student welfare. Who powers the USD Laws website? Not within the isn't, isn't it the Divina Law Office? I don't know that. Sir, Dean Divina? Yes, Your Honor, please. Uh, when uh, we were informed that the uh, age juris fraternity was not recognized or is not recognized for this year, we had it taken down from the website of the university or the college. So, sir, you are acknowledging that it is the, uh, the Divina Law that is powering the website of USD? We provide the resources in putting it up, uh, Your Honor. Okay. So that's one. Another is that what I've heard is that they weren't ta taken down from the website until after the hazing incident. Until after they the were not hazing. recognized by the university, uh, Your Honor. So they were not recognized by the university because of the hazing incident and not because of the... Not because of the hazing, uh, Your Honor. They were recognized last year. They did not meet the requirements for this year. That's why they were not recognized. And one of the reasons is, is that uh, the incumbent head is no longer a student of USD. When you had that brawl in Manila Hotel, when they had that brawl, they were suspended, correct? That's right. Your so Honor. that wasn't reason enough for them to be on probation and to be removed from this website? Well, the uh, decision was uh, signed by the members of the committee first week of September, Your Honor. And following the procedure of the university, it has to be approved by the OSA. Uh, it was approved October 4 and to be implemented next semester, Your Honor. Okay. When you're saying September, is it of this year? This year, Your Honor. Okay. After, school, after school has already started. So it seems that 
the university acted only because of public clamor, because of what had happened. Not necessarily, Your Honor, uh, because the, uh, there was a committee that was formed for that purpose. The chairman prepared the draft as early as July, third week of July, but signed by the other members of the committee first week of September. Okay, um, may I ask... With the permission you? of uh, Senator Grace Po. Mr. Jonathan Santos, are you around? I heard that you are... Yeah, student council. Jonathan Santos, um, you're the head of the student take your council. Seat. So, and respond to the questions of Senator Po. Have you taken your oath? <coughs> Not yet. So, come sec. Nagot ka na ng last time? First, okay na yun. Nakapag-oath na siya. Okay. Bago, bago. Senator Po, please proceed. Yes. Uh, welcome, Mr. Santos. Sa aking pagtatanong sa inyong dalawa, no, ma gusto ko lang linawin ito na hindi malinaw ang proseso ninyo sa universidad. Ma'am, akalain ninyo may mga suspension na ganyan, may mga iba't iba na, ah, hindi, pero sila yung in charge doon, ah, ito yung website, ito doon. Dapat yan consolidated. Kaya nga nasususpindi ang isang organisasyon dahil maaaring merong hindi maayos na maidudulot ito sa estudyante. Tapos napapabayaan yung mga ibang bagay dahil nag ibang departamento dito, ibang departamento doon. Hindi consolidated. So, matanong ko nga yung student council um, head. Uh, Jonathan? Yes, po. Alam mo bang suspendido yun noon yung Aegis Juris nung inimbitahan ninyo sa orientation? Uh, at that time po kasi, nung uh, vacation po, uh, the, orienta the freshman orientation happened the week before the classes began. And uh, before that po, uh, we worked on the premise that all of the organizations in the Faculty of Civil Law passed their uh, recognition papers po. So pending their recognition, we invited them to present their uh, organizations in the freshman orientation po. Okay, let me tell you now, have you received any official correspondence from the university saying that um, several fraternities or ages juris is suspended? Uh, not at the, uh, ano po, not at the time that we had the ano po, orientation. Po. How about now? Uh, now po, wala pa po. Wala Kasi pa po, they, ano po, uh, ang OSA po, uh, they will have to give the recognition to the organization and to the organizations and it does not pass through the student councils po. They give it independently to the So they give it independently to the organization that was suspended? Uh, no po, the rec I'm telling about the recognition po. About the, the suspension po of uh, ages. Uh, I have not received any problem. So as student council head, you have not received official correspondence that they are suspended? Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Grace, uh, with your permission, did you in fact submit a proposal uh, for the recognition of <coughs> IGS juries? Uh, no, for the student councils don't submit recognition papers po for uh, organizations. Hindi ka nakapag-submit ng proposal? Uh, for, for the, the activity po. Yeah, for the activities. Uh, for the activity po, the freshman orientation, we have a proposal po. Nasa, ano nangyari doon sa proposal? What action was taken? Uh, and to whom are you submitting these proposals? Uh, the proposals were submitted to the Office for Student Affairs po. And then, the what action was taken? It was approved po. It was approved. Do you have a copy? I don't have it with me po. Pero you in fact know that uh, it was acted upon uh, positively. Ah, uh, yes po. Uh, the papers were returned to us po with the signature po. Senator Grace, please proceed. Okay. So, muli, malinaw dito na yung student council head mismo, eh hindi naman nakakaalam kung talagang suspendido. So, parang, parang laway lang talaga, no? Wala naman talagang repercussion ang di umanong suspension. So, Chairman, may you please be allowed to uh, respond to the... Sure. Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, Clarify. Yes, yes, please, uh, Your Honor. I mean, uh, there are uh, systems in place, uh, and each unit of the university has uh, duties to fulfill, and the OSA is the one in charge of determining who are the organizations to be recognized. Dean Divina, tell me exactly how the OSA has fulfilled its uh, responsibility. What repercussions are being felt now by the suspended uh, fraternity? But, Your, Your Honor, we have, I, I hope the committee will appreciate that before last year, the fraternity is recognized, and they're presumed to have uh, the grounds or reasons for recognition this year. 
and it's only September that to determine they're not recognized, meaning that was after the orientation had been conducted already by the uh, student council. Okay, sir. Osa, do you have anything that you posted in the university website saying that this fraternity suspended or have you given any correspondence to anybody in particular? Okay. Uh, we do not give, we do not post any announcement regarding the recognition of these organizations. We just issue a letter to the corresponding colleges as to which organizations are recognized. But let me mention that as early as July, these organizations are made to submit requirements. And as early as July, we knew that the requirements, like for example, the signature of the people are supposed to sign the endorsement to the OSA for their recognition had not been complied with, not even till the incident happened. So um, because Senator these... Po, again, yeah, excuse me, ma'am, no? Medyo magulo eh. Sinabi si Jonathan, you're the head of the USC Faculty of Civil Law Student Council, di ba? Yes, sir. And sabi mo, nagsabit ka ng proposal do sa uh, student affairs. Uh, sir, it was the project proposal po yeah, for project such proposal. specific activity lang po. Specific, what activity was that? The freshman orientation po. Nang IGS juries? No, sir. All of the, of the fraternity? Lahat ng freshmen? All of the organizations po in the faculty of civil Including? Civilo. Including all po. Including IGS. No, no, including IGS juries. Yes po. And it was acted upon favorably by the student affairs, di ba? Yes Office po, of there was an approval oh, so po. So medyo magulo, hindi kayo... Para may disconnect ka. And sinasabi nyo ngayon, hindi nyo nare-recognize. And yet, you are acting favorably on the proposal submitted by the Student Council, Civil Law Student Council. So, kindly reconcile your positions, ma'am. Sir, uh, this activity was conducted before the school opening. That's supposed to be the orientation. So it is presumed that because they have submitted, all organizations for that matter have submitted their papers for recognition and on the presumption of regularity, it is presumed that they are regular, in meaning to say that they have complied with all the requirements. So when the orientation happened, the organizations, all of them were given the chance to say something prior to our issuing the official recognition documents, which happened sometime in September. Now, in relation to what Jonathan was saying, it is true that activities are supposed to be approved by the OSA, but it is an organization that is existing in the college. So before any activities approved by the OSA, they should have passed through the approval of the local administration, like for example, the Student Welfare and Development, and then also the Father Regent and the Dean before it comes to us. Uh, Mr. Madam, Mr. Chairman, with the permission of uh, Senator Grace Poe, can I interject on that point? Uh, Ma'am, yes. um, sabi ni Dean kasi na suspend na daw sila. Suspended um, na po sila. Po. He uh, just said... He they're not recognized for this year, uh, Your Honor. So they're not recognized... It was determined in September of this year that they're not recognized, Your Honor. Well, uh, yeah, the uh, year before, the they were recognized. Allow me to put yes, my please. point, no? What's the difference between suspended, recognized, and removed from the university? When you say not recognized, di ba ibig sabihin niya na you are non-entity. You no longer exist. Uh, they not, not, don't recognize not, you, so you no longer exist. They're not authorized to conduct activities uh, within the university or faculty, uh, Your Honor. Correct. Yes. So that is even worse than suspension, yeah. di ba? The members no, were suspended, Your Honor. The uh, organization is not recognized. You know, there's a problem, Mr. Chairman. There seems to be a problem of UST when it comes to these organizations. Why am I raising this point? Oh. Madam, yeah. you listen to me first. The reason I'm raising this is if the students knew the status, the real status of the fraternity, baka hindi na recruit si Acho Castillo. Because, you know, if you are suspended or you are not recognized, may malaking sign dyan, Aegis Juris is no longer recognized by UST or temporary suspension. Alam po ng mga estudyante na may problema ang fraternity na ito. Kaya hindi po nila sasalihan. Dahil nga sa inaksyon ninyo na magpalabas ng notice na hindi sila recognized, yung anak po ni Mr. and Mrs. Castillo, they're right here, front of you. Let's not think that they're not here. Sumali sa inyong fraternity, 
thinking that it was a recognized, duly recognized, duly uh, uh, registered, accredited fraternity. If the university and the uh, College of Law had come out with a very clear cut policy on which uh, fraternities or organizations are recognized or not, this could have been prevented, ma'am. I would like to put that on record. And do you uh, agree with me? Yes or no? Do you agree with uh, me, ma'am? I agree partly. When I say partly, it's because, as I was saying, and I would hold on that statement, that we are allowed by CM, uh, the CHED that within the first month from the opening of classes, we can issue recognition. And we adhered to that. So as early as um, July, they already submitted, as I said, the papers for recognition, but these were lacking. And so the official recognition came in the second week of September. So these students should have joined the orientation, but not for the purpose of recruitment, because there is also a schedule for recruitment done by organizations, which comes after they have been officially recognized. And so if and when recruitment really happened, that was not authorized. Director? And yes, uh, may I just yes. add, no? Director, uh, wouldn't it be better that you come up with that list before orientation? Because there are several organizations that even during orientation, nagre-recruit na po sila. It's obvious. We know that. We're all yes, university po. students here. Opo. But I would also want to mention that, aside from the recognition that should have been given by the OSA, there had been some memorandum. There was a memorandum issued by the Office of Civil Law through the Student Welfare and Development Coordinator, and that was clearly posted on the bulletin board that these students should not recruit among first-year students. So if and when that again happened, that would not have been acceptable. With the indulgence of Senator Subiri, Senator Po has <coughs> still has yes, the floor. Yes, yes Senator Po. Um, thank you, Senator Lapp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ma'am, yung, yung uh, layunin ng mga hearing na ganito okay. ay hindi lamang para malaman ko ano talaga nangyari, kundi para din maayos ang ating mga batas para hindi, hindi na maulit ang mga ganitong mga bagay. Siguro naman sa ating pagdinig ngayon ay nakikita nyo may konting uh, may, may pagkukulang pagdating sa impormasyon ng mga nangyayaring ganito. Siguro pwede din gawin, hindi naman sa nanghihimasok pero mm -hmm. nakasalalay ang uh, kalagayan ng ating mga estudyante sa proseso ng universidad. Naintindihan ko so po So dapat siguro well ma masaayos ng konti na maging malinaw lamang well na ang mga organisasyon na kasapi katulad si Jonathan ay dapat konektado sa mga polisiya ng administration. Ngayon, um, kasi meron dito no, yung Student Organizations Recognition Requirements. Nakalagay po dito, the petition for recognition of a student organization must be filed with the office <coughs> for Student Affairs, sa inyo po yun, June 30, 2017. Mm -hmm. Ang application po ng Aegis Juris na pinirmahan ni Arvin Balag ay July 12. Apo. So, lagpas na po. So, kung kayo ay magiging Kaya, stricto, ba't pa ninyo? Di ba doon pa lamang eh, deadline, you know, any other qualification should not have been, should not have mattered because deadline na yun eh, tapos na. Pero sinama pa rin ninyo. Meron po silang petition for, yeah, that is for the academic year po kasi kahit na mag-submit po sila ng June or July, that is still for the incoming academic year. Ay, labo eh. Opo. Kasi nakalagay nga dito June 30, 2017, yung application nila, July 12. Um, Yun po yung nakalagay dyan, kaya lang nagbago po kami ng academic year sa UST. Nag-start na po kami ng August. It doesn't say Opo. academic year. It says a particular date. So, I mean, never mind if it's clear that academic year mm -hmm. without a specific date, but you have a specific date mentioned, ma'am. Kaya lang po kasi that falls within the time na vacation po. But we are going through the papers already. And nakaschedule so, din po kami. So, ma'am, you dropped the ball. Yeah. You dropped the ball. Kapabayaan po ito sapagkat um, eh, sinasabi ninyo dahil walang pasok. No, no. Uh, what, when I say walang pasok, 
uh, we considered the start of the counting of days allowed by the CHED within 30 days from the start of classes. Okay. Opo. You know what? It doesn't mention academic year. Uh, nice ko lang klaruin. Walang nakasabi dito ang academic year. Eksakto pong pecha ang naka-issue dito. At hindi ninyo sinunod. Tinanggap pa rin ninyo ang ages juris. Kaya malinaw na itong Ni punto. I think... Tinanggap po namin yung application nila, pero hindi po ibig sabihin na pag tinanggap, ina-approve po namin, in-re-recognize eh, po namin sila. Sinasabi nga ninyo eh, na hindi na dapat tanggapin eh, dahil sa deadline pa lamang, hindi na sila dapat kwalipikado. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may please uh, be allowed to add, uh, that is based on the old uh, calendar year, uh, Your Honor, which changed or shifted to August. I mean, okay. we used to start classes June, we shifted to August about two to three years ago, Your Honor. Yeah, but it says here... It makes reference to the old rule, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, That's based it, on the, the old rules rule. and regulations, but 2017, 2018 to, hindi ninyo napalitan. It should be adjusted accordingly, Your Honor, because we, we changed the start of the school year from well, June to August, Your Honor. Whether it should have been adjusted or not and you haven't changed your rules, you still accepted it, knowing in your head that um, this memorandum was still out. Anyway, so you didn't make the proper adjustments. Um, I think I will now go to... Mababalikan ko na lang siguro si Mr. Ventura. With the kind indulgence of uh, Senator... Senator... Grace. With the permission of Senator Po, Senator Gacelian is recognized. Yes, I have a few ano lang, uh, questions related to that. Uh, Jonathan, kayong grupo nyo nag-organize itong orientation? Yes po, the Student Council po. Nung inorganize nyo ito, sino mga pinadala yung uh, Nang, uh, per, uh, uh, pinadala nyo ng letter to ask permissions? Sir, uh, all the organizations po in the Faculty of Civil po, including the academic... Okay, sa taas, sa taas. Kanino ka humingi ng permiso o kanino ka nagbigay ng notice na merong ganitong orientation? Uh, the project proposals are being submitted first to the Dean so, for approval and to the Father Regent for the budget po. So, humingi, humingi ka ng permission? Is this a permission? Uh, approval po. Approval. Uh, we passed papers po for so you the gave, activity approval. you uh, gave a letter requesting for approval sa office ng dean? Yes po. And sa office ng? Student Affairs po. Student it will affairs. go there after po ma-approve ng dean's office po. So, dalawang opisina ang binigyan mo Excuse ng me, letter? Excuse me, that's dean of civil law. Yes po. Kasi ikaw, uh, civil law student council. Yes po. So, no. dadaan ito sa dean. Yes po, sa local uh, dean's yes, office po. Naaprobahan ba itong dalawa? Yes po. Naaprobahan? Yes po. So alam ng office ng, uh, si, uh, alam ng dean ng College of Civil Law na meron kayong ganitong orientation? Uh, yes po. And then, alam mo ba nila kung sino mga organization na in-invite nyo? Uh, at the time po, uh, we only had the general description po that there will be organizations because we're still determining of uh, the organizations that we will include in the orientations. And uh, when we knew that all of them were required to submit recognition papers, we invited all of them po. Nung nagbigay ka ng papeles sa office ng dean, sa office ng uh, father regent, sinabihan ba kayo na kung sino-sino yung hindi pwedeng imbitahin dahil uh, hindi sila recognized? We know po na there is a ban po for recruitment of the freshmen po, but then uh, we are working on the premise that all of them uh, submitted recognition papers and it means po na they are uh, parang qualified to be recognized for this coming academic year. So we gave them the chance to present during the orientation po. So in other words, inimbitahan nyo lahat ng organizations? Yes po. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, pababa, necessarily, kung ano yung dinaan ng pakyat, dadaanan din pababa. Uh, once po ma-approve ng Office for Student Affairs po, uh, diretso na sa inyo? It will come back to us po with the approval of through, the Office for Secretary General. Through proper channel, di ba? Uh, it okay. will come directly to us po. We will get the papers directly. from OSA. But yung proposal nyo, necessarily, would pass through the Dean of Civil Law. Uh, all of the papers po are attached in, ano po, are attached together po. So would it will come back. Would you know if the Dean of, the, uh, student of Civil Law uh, was informed of the favorable action taken by the Student Affairs? Uh, I, I cannot answer You cannot that answer that. anymore. Uh, Dean, yes, yeah. please, Your Honor. Uh, sabi nila, nagpadala ng proposal and it covers or it covered all 
the organizations, including IGS juries, I suppose. Right? Your Honor, the proposal the is to conduct orientation among freshman students, Your Honor. That's the proposal. Yes. And the budget that goes to the proposal, Your Honor. Pero lahat, kinocover lahat ng organizations, kasi freshmen yung involved, pero lahat ng uh, organizations, including fraternities. At that, at that time, Your Honor, uh, it should be pointed out that the fraternity, all of them are presumed to yes. have complied with the requirements. It's only September that was determined that they're not compliant. And but knowing, I also, yes, knowing that the IGES juries was not recognized at the time, diba, prudence, no, in, in dictates, June, in June, diba, yes, prudence dictates that you could have taken notice or uh, noted na ito hindi kasali ito kasi hindi ito recognized, hindi ito, su ito suspended ito for this year. So, was it a case of negligence or oversight or what? Your Honor, in June, they are deemed to be compliant. Only September that they're determined not to be compliant. So, when the orientation was conducted, they're presumed to be compliant. But we also have to uh, uh, inform the committee that it was mentioned and stressed by the uh, coordinator for SWD that recruitment is not allowed for freshman students. So regardless of the issue of accreditation, Your Honor, the fact is they're not allowed to recruit for the freshman students. I refer you back to Senator Po. Um, alam niyo po, uh, paulit-ulit lang to, Mr. Chair, pero I think maliwanag na sa atin na talagang uh, meron ma dapat ayusin sa proseso din nila. Um, Siguro babalikan ko to no nung huling hearing natin si Senator Subiria humingi ng kopya ng CCTV ng Pacific Star Building dahil nung September 12 uh, Atyo texted his mom at sinasabi na nandun siya sa isang law office along Petron sa May Buendia just across the gasoline station is Pacific Star Building where the Divina Law is located may na submit na bang CCTV footage there was, no, sub there was no submission we from we Pacific Star. Nangihingi sila ng court order. Anyway, we were able to secure a uh, just a uh, footage to the Pacific Star, and we'll show it uh, on, the, on the slide. So, uh, Mr. Chair, do we have the footage for September 12? And the reason why I ask this is um, there are just a few connections here that we need to seriously note. Number one, I think the owner of... Um, Pacific Star or the Pacific Star building is owned by Century Properties and their corporate secretary uh, is a senior partner at Divina Law. The same owner of uh, Pacific Star, which is Century Properties, is also the owner of Novotel Hotels and Resort, kung saan nagkita yung mga frat members pagkatapos. So I just want to make sure that they are complying because their general counsel is Divina Law. Again, connected to this uh, situation. Uh, on the screen, Senator Grace, ito yung footage ng CCTV sa Pacific Star. And would like to ask uh, maybe uh, the parents of Atyo, if it's possible for you to recognize kung may resemblance <laughs> ba ito at least kay, uh, kay Atyo at kung ano yung palatandaan na pwede niyong sabihin na si Atyo nga ito nakatayo rito. Uh, Your Honor, it looks very much like him. In that picture, you will see his blue jacket. His, his mom bought that jacket. He was wearing black pants and uh, black shoes. And also, the hairstyle. Yeah, yung next slide, makikita yung jacket na sinabi yung binili ni mami ni Atyo. Yes, Your Honor. So, pwede mo pakita? Ayan, yung jacket. Would you confirm na ito yung binili yung jacket for Atyo? Um, yes, for your own. Sigurado po kayo. Yes, all. So, establish yung fact that si Atyo indeed visited Pacific Star, at least Pacific Star. Yes, Your Honor. We're not concluding na uh, Divina Law Office yung pinuntahan, but at least sa Pacific Star, he really set foot, di ba? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Center Grace. Ano kaya din? Please be allowed to uh, uh, respond. But uh, one thing is for certain, Your Honor, he did not set foot in Divina Law. We installed 16 CCTVs in our office, and it will clearly show, it has shown in fact, that he did not set foot or step foot in uh, the Binalo office. 
Have you submitted? Oh, we did, Your Honor. The, the day following the last Senate hearing, Your Honor. Okay. Is there a possibility that he may not have set foot physically in your office, but then he met with um, a few of your people within the building, maybe a cafeteria or any other common place? I mean, it's not unlikely that Divina Law maintaining an official lease in one particular space there could also have another place where you meet in the building. Is it possible? Well, I'm not so sure about that, Your Honor, but uh, one thing is for certain. I did not see Atio in Pacific Star. Okay. How many law firms are in Pacific Star? Are there several ones? Should be at least minimum three, Your Honor. Okay. So if there are about three, perhaps we can go one by one and ask them. Uh, because from what is clear here, he said that he was going to a law office. So it could be one of the three, not necessarily yours. But it's just such a coincidence. Um, all of the connections, Aegis Juris, having strong ties with Divina Law, Divina Law maintaining the website for the school, Divina Law um, having a lot of um, support for the fraternity, you being the dean, and him mentioning that he's in a law office close to that building or within that building where you have your law firm. So for whatever purpose, I think we need to be able to determine that. I think now um, my question will go back to Mr. Ventura. Mr. Ventura, you were on a break for a while. Eh? So I think you mentioned, nabanggit ninyo na, ay, ilan, ilan taon ka na ba sa Aegis Juris na miyembro? One year pa lang po. Ilan? One year po. One year. But are you aware of initiation rights um, in the past? Not necessarily this one. Dun po ang aware po from my batch po. Simula po sa batch ko po. So sa batch mo, kailan yon? August 2016 po. So 2016. So may napanood ka na na initiation rights. Yun ang yari sa yo. Yes po. So nasaktan ka ba? Opo. So siguro baka nakakatakot ano pero malakas ba talaga mga pagpalo sa inyo? Hindi sa yo, hindi naman kay ano. Yung sa akin po. Malakas. Opo. Malakas. Um may suntok ba nakasama? Sa akin po doon lang po sa proseso po. Okay. Meron ba, hindi mo kailangan banggitin ang pangalan, ano, pero sa isang initiation, sinong pwedeng magsabi, tama na yan? Yung ano po, MI po at saka GP po. GP? Opo. Si, si, anong ibig sabihin ng GP muli? Grand Prefectus po. So sino yung GP nung panahon mo? Si, ano po, Miguel po. Si Miguel. Miguel, salamat. Uh, ah, o oh, sige. So siya, so siya nagpapigil nung sobra na? Pa. Okay. So ibig sabihin, hindi naman si Miguel salamat din ang susunod na GP dito sa nangyari kay Acho, no? Uh, well, so hindi siya. Pero meron. Meron. Pero yung tao na yon hindi pinigil. Oo, dahil siya pa nga yung huling nagpadal. Oh, anyway, uh, dun sa mga messages mo, Mr. Salamat, ano? In the group that uh, group chat presented during the last hearing, it appears that you were in possession of Atyo's phone at that time. Ikaw yung may hawak. Ang sabi mo dito, Tatay na yung tumatawag sa cellphone. Brad, tumatawag na kasi yung parents sa number ni Mi Axel and M.I. Ralph. Brad, flood na ng messages laman ng cellphone. Lagpas na sa daliri ko ang missed calls. So, nasa iyo pa ang cellphone niya noon, noong nangyari. Nasa na yung cellphone na yan? Uh, Your Honor, if I answer that, uh, that would show that I, would, I am already complicit to the crime of obstruction of justice. Your Honor. So you're uh, you're invoking. Uh, I am invoking my rights against self-incrimination. Kasi alam nyo, ewan ko kung paano nyo gagawin to ha. 
ang hinihiling ng mga magulang, maibalik lang yung mga kagamitan niya. Maintindihan natin yon. Siguro kung hindi man ikaw, kung sino man, bigla na lang pwedeng may regalo sa kanila. Padala na ninyo. Um, nandito ba ang isa pang maaari natin tanungin dito eh. Kasi may nabanggit dito na may tinatawag na Brad. Uh, lang. Mr. Chair, just uh, one minute. I'm looking for my notes here. Ang dami na kasi dito eh. Um, you may pursue Eric your point, Senator Grace. Eric Fuentes. Nandito ba si Eric Fuentes? Mr. Fuentes, sumupa na ba kayo? Um, I'm sorry, kindly and Mr. Nardi Oz to Mr. Fuentes. Including uh, those who have not yet taken their oath, kindly uh, stand up. Yung mga ngayon lang nag-attend. Uh, Thank you. Um, may, may I request all those who just recently attended, including those in the gallery who were um, given notices to attend this hearing, please stand. <coughs> Kindly raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the Senate inquiry? Okay, thank you. Kindly proceed, Senator. Mr. Fuent, uh, Attorney Fuentes, kayo po ba ay member ng Aegis Juris? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, kayo din po ba ay isa sa mga law partners nitong Bernardo and Fuentes na katabi ng AJF Library? Uh, just for clarification, Your Honor, it's not a partnership, Your Honor. Up to this date, I'm a solo practitioner, Your Honor. Okay, but... Your law firm is beside the Aegis Jewish yes. Fraternity Library. So, sorry, po. yes, Your Honor. Okay, what happened to your CCTV footage at that time? Thank you very much for asking that question, Your Honor. We don't have any CCTV cameras, Your Honor. As early as September 25, 2017, uh, I sent a letter to the uh, MPD, Your Honor, telling them that I do not possess or operate any CCTV, Your Honor. It was unfortunate that on that Senate hearing, September 25, it was, it was stated that uh, I gave a blank CCTV footage, which is untrue, Your Honor. So is there a reason why you don't have a CCTV? Sorry, Your Honor. Is there a reason why you don't maintain a CCTV camera within the premises of your law firm? There's no particular reason, Your Honor. I just don't have any CCTV cameras or I, neither, I, I don't operate one, Your Honor. Okay. Then may I ask you, uh, within the the text threads, eh. meron kayong nabanggit na Big Brother. Parang uh, galing sa'yo, Eric Fuentes. Big Brother requested all the broad, broad, broads, especially the alumni, to show our support by attending the Senate investigation and visiting Brad Popoy. Hindi naman masama yun, eh. Hindi masama yung sinabi mo na yun. Maganda nga na sinasabi mag-attend kayo ng hearing. Uh, with all due respect, Your Honor, with that particular statement, Your Honor, I could not recall if it was uh, I gave it through a uh, Facebook or text messages, Your Honor. But uh, I can recall I gave that statement, but not particular what mode, Your Honor, because I've already sent several uh, text messages or messages, Your Honor, in general. Okay, mm -hmm. but who is Big Brother, sir? <laughs> Madam Chairman, Big Brother is a generic term that we give to all our GPs or elders, Your Honor. Siguro, right. matalino medyo, naman Senator kayo. Grace, <laughs> medyo klaro yung elder or yung elders, elders. Iba yung big brothers sa elders. So, don't tell, uh, don't tell us na pareho yun, generic yun sa elders. Mawalang galam po. Yun po talaga ang aming binibigay na term po sa mga nakatanda po sa amin po. Eh, di mali yung grammar pa ninyo. I mean, mga abogado kayo, di ba dapat sinasabi ni ng mga big brothers Th that's na... O oh, sige. Sorry po, sorry okay. po. So ganito na lang po, attorney. So banggitin mo sa akin, bigyan mo ako ng halimbawa ng mga big brother niyo. Would you consider Dean Divina as a big brother? Oh, we can, Your Honor, but we don't call him big brother, Your Honor. We call him Dean Divina, Your Honor, or Sir, Sir Divina. Okay, but he's considered, I mean, one of the elders. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. 
Um, who else? Who else would you consider a big brother? We have uh, the past GPs here, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, we have the, some of the founders, Your Honor. Okay, alam mo, okay lang naman kasi yung text mo eh, dun sa nakita natin. Yung sinasabi mo na mag-attend kayo ng Senate hearing. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, also to visit a, 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 a brat in prison. So, I'm just saying, we would like to know sana, sino si Big Brother. Anyway, uh, huling na lang munang katanungan, Mr. Chair, siguro sa round na to, ano? Para lang... Nung dating hearing natin, hiniling ko po na imbitahin ang driver, family driver ng mga tranggiya. Nandito po ba siya? Yes, Your Honor. Ikaw, ikaw, ikaw yun. Yeah. Ay, ikaw pala. Sorry po. O nga pala, familiar yung mukha niya. Kayo po si Mr. Tranggiya. Pakitawag po yung family driver ninyo. Bago siguro, bag, nanumpa na ba si, ano pong pangalan nila, yung family driver? Kaboga? Naka, nakapanumpa na po kayo, Mr. Hindi pa? Okay. Okay. Bago, bago ko kayo puntaan, ano, um, nais ko lang uh, balikan nito mabilis lang, Mr. Chair, just for the record. Kasi ang sinasabi ninyo, big brother is a generic term for older members who's probably had more experience and more authority. If that's true, bakit ganito ang statement? Especially the alumni, meaning my particular reference a Big Brother. So isang tao lang, di ba? Dapat, di ba? Kasi yung sinasabi ito, okay, Big Brother requested all the brads, especially the alumni. Parang malabo talagang isipin, ha, Mr. Chair, for the record, ha, na Big Brother pertains to several individuals. Lalong-lalo na abogado ito. Siguro naman malinaw ang mga grammar nito. Yung plural, singular, at kung ano-ano pa dapat na... May elaborate? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, nung when I texted that, Your Honor, there was were previous meetings, Your Honor. So one of the meetings uh, topics was uh, for to support the Senate, Your Honor. So I gave that uh, text to at least to convince other members to 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 attend this, this uh, Senate investigation, Your Honor. Well, anyway, as I mentioned, Mr. Chair, this will be circuitous and. Uh, I'm just putting that on the record, okay? Um, Mr. Laboga, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Salamat po sa inyong pagdalo ngayon. Um, nabanggit po kasi ang pangalan ninyo. Ay, nabanggit po ang inyong uh, uh, involvement. Senator Grace, uh, may kasama ka, abogado? Kindly introduce yourselves. Dalawa, abogado mo? Sige, paki-identify lang for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. I am Attorney Ruel Ilagan, Your Honor. And you're representing Mr. Laboga? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Are you a member of the Aegis Juris Fraternity? No. No. Okay. Then. Uh, Paalala lang kay Mr. Laboga, pwede ka magkonsulta sa lawyer bago ka sumagot sa tanong, ha? Sige. Um, Mr. Laboga, kasi na, nabanggit po kayo na, ka, na kasama nila, kasama ng maibang miyembro na naririto, na nagdala kay Mr. Castillo sa emergency room. Uh, ikaw nga ba ang nagmaneho doon sa naging biktima? Hindi po. Hindi mo nakikilala yung biktima na yon? Hindi mo nakita? Wala ka nakitang may sakit na dinala sa ospital? Hindi 
Hindi po. Hindi. Uh, meron ka bang minamanehong pulang sasakyan? Wala po. With the kind indulgence uh, of Senator Pope. Senator Gatsela. Uh, I just want to interject. Mr. Laboga, nasaan ho kayo nung alas 5 ng umaga, September 17? Kasama ko po si boss sa sa siya po. Sinong boss? Antonio Trangia. Sinong saan siya? Bulakan po. Anong address? MacArthur po. Bigyan mo nga yung specific address kung nasaan ka alas 5 ng umaga uh, ng September 17. madali naman siguro masabi kung nasaan ka, anong address, di ba? Hindi mo na kailangan tanungin yung abogado dahil kung nandoon ka, hindi eh, nandoon ka. Saan sa MacArthur? Mahaba ang MacArthur. Bangkal po. Bangkal, anong bayan? May kawayan. Bang, ba, barangay Bangkal? May kawayan po. May kawayan. Anong shop ito? Oo nga, bakit... Uh, ERCT po. Ano, ano yun? ERCT, Tile e Supply. ERCT, Tile Su Supply. Opo. Nandoon ka nung... Meron bang nakakakita sa... Meron bang nakakita sa'yo doon na nandoon ka? Meron bang mga ibang tao na kasama mo doon na magpapatunay na nandoon ka? Opo. Sino? Sila po na boss. Sino? Boss po. Sinong boss? Antonio Trangia. That, uh, that's it for now, Mr. Chair. Teka muna. Uh, ano mong naman? Ikaw ay family driver ni na Mr. Antonio Trangia, di ba? Opo. Anong minaman ni homo? Pajero po. Anong klaseng Pajero? Hindi mo rin. Di ba, Lina? Wala kang minaman ni homo pulang pick up? Wala po. Never ka nakapagmaneho ng pulang pick up? Opo. Never mo nakita yung pulang pick up? Opo. Eh, kanila yun eh. Sige, Senator Grace. Naku, Mr. Chair, mukhang nahahawa dito sa mga ibang resource persons natin. Hindi po, hindi po dapat matutunan yung mga bagay na ganito kasi gusto lang naman natin tulungan din yung mga naging biktima dito. Lagay nyo rin yung sarili nyo sa katayuan ng mga magulang. Um, ganito, Si yung anak po ninyo nagmamaneho. Nagmamaneho po ba yung anak ninyo? Okay. Opo. So, maring siya lang ang nagmaneho nito, pero uh, umabot sa akin kaalaman na si Mr. Balag, si Alvin Balag, ang driver niya ang nagmaneho kasi nitong pulang pickup pala. So, Mr. Chair, dahil alam naman natin hindi naman sasagot si Mr. Balag eh. Pasapin na po natin yung uh, driver nila kung meron para siya na lang ang magsalita. I would like to... I second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, let, let's just ask for uh, subpoena the driver of uh, Mr. Arvin Balag, Mr. Chair, if we can obtain the name of that driver. And that would be all for now, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Paul. Senator Subiri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, babalikan ko po yung uh, ating witness na si Mark Anthony Ventura. Uh, Mark Anthony, uh, this is not, this will not uh, affect your case any bit kasi yung pag-uusapan natin dito, yung nangyari sa'yo sa kaso mo nung kayo po i-recruit. Kasi gusto lang natin malaman yung, yung, yung violenting nangyayari sa mga fraternities at uh, sororities at iba't ibang organisasyon. Uh, this is also an aid of legislation. Dun sa situation mo, it's your situation. You know, it's not, uh, uh, it happened to you, so this is your own personal situation. Yung sa yung uh, recruitment process, um, ilang beses po nangyari ang pagkakaroon ng uh, physical uh, 
physical and mental, say, um, torture or, or hazing ika nga na nangyari sa'yo? Is it, does it happen only in one day? Uh, Your Honor, yung sa amin po, yung rec recruitment po, uh, kami po yung lumalapit po sa organization. Then, yung pag inano na po lumapit po kami, pag tinanggap po kami, mag-start po kami nung sa service po. Yung sa amin, yung sa akin po kasi, ano po yun, uh, one week po talaga. But, late po ako lumapit nun, nangyari po, uh, three days po, yung sa akin. Sa three days po na yan, uh, nalala mo kung saan yung nangyari yung, yung uh, initiation rights mo? Hindi uh, po ako familiar po, pero alam ko po, outside Manila po ako eh. When you say outside Manila, was it in the south or in the north? Was it in Bulacan? I mean, it, it's just uh, your experience. Uh, alam mo, para yung sa, ano matigil po, na po yung hazing na to, di ba? So, yung, akin, yung sa akin po, yung sa amin po, batch ko po, uh, somewhere ata po sa Batangas po ata yun. Batangas? Di po ako, bas, parang Batangas po ata yun. Hindi naman kayo blindfolded pagdala doon? Blindfolded po. Ah, blindfolded kayo. <laughs> Parang nakidnap kayo ah. Blindfolded pala kayo papunta doon. Wow. So, um, pagdating nyo doon, three days sinasabi mo, uh, what are, on the three days, so day one, pwede mo isalaysay lang nangyari sa'yo day one? Ah, uh, bali, yung paglapit po sa amin, ang ano po, pa, gradual po kasi yun eh, yung service po namin. Pahirap ng pahirap bawat araw. Eh, nung late na nga po ako dumating, yung sa amin, yung sa akin po, na service ko po, uh, nag-start na po ako later the week na po. So, meron na po agad physical. Sa physical, ano po yung physical na yun? So, pagdating mo, ano ba yung physical? Push up, chin up, o suntok agad? Wala po sa amin suntok po, pero ang ano po, Uh, depende po yan. Pwede po kaming pag-push up and jumping jacks. Kung ano po, mga kahit mga training ng mga military, gano'n, squat. Okay. Pero sa, sa first day yun, pagdating mo? Apo, apo. Sa second day, anong pinagagawa nila sa'yo? Yung ano na po yun, uh, same din po, utos-utos po sa Saiwar po. Saiwar. Pero um, very clear naman dun sa nangyari kay Acho, di ba? May mga pagbubugbog sa mga braso. Ano yun? Suntok? Yung nangyari sa'yo, sinuntok ba yung braso niyo? Yung sa akin po, yung sa akin po na nangyari po, meron pong ganun. Meron ganun? Meron pong suntok po sa akin. Sa braso? Opo. Sa muka? Wala po. Wala naman. Sampal? Meron po. Meron. Pag inom ng mga dura, ganyan? Wala po. Wala naman ganun. Ah, yung sinasabi nilang candle wax, ginamit din sa'yo? Ah, sa pagkakaalala ko po sa, sa akin po, nung time po namin, meron din po. Candle wax? Opo. Yung candle wax, yung ano to ha, yung mainit na, yung inaano sa kandila, yung, yung kanyang wax, saan, saan, saan nila i, i, pinapatak ang candle wax? Yung sa akin po, sa amin po kasi, ano po, sa likod po. Sa likod? Opo. Masakit? Opo. Doon sa final day mo, uh, so paano yun? So, buong araw ginagawa sa yun? Hindi po. Ano po yun, uh, Your Honor? Proseso po. Mayroon po allotted time na pinatansya po kung depende po sa, sa amin po kasi, madami po kasi kami nun, ang batch ko po. So, maaga po kami nagsimula. Maaga nagsimula. So, hindi sabay-sabay. So, ik, let's say, ikaw muna, tapos pangalawang batchmate mo, pangatlong batchmate mo, ganun ba? O sabay-sabay kayo nahihiz? Yung sa final rights po namin, sabay-sabay po kami sa isang lugar po. May mga nag-collapse ba sa mga kasamaan mo? Sa hirap? Sa, sa amin po, sa pagkakaalala ko po, wala po. Wala naman. Pero hirap na hirap kayo. Nahirapan po kami. Sa last, sa final rights, sa final day, uh, 
may kasama ng paddling yun. Or may paddling ba from day 1, 2, and 3 sa'yo? Ano lang po, yung doon lang, ang final rights po namin, sa last day lang po yun. So sa final rights, um, pwede mo isalaysay yung nangyayari sa'yo, naka-blindfold ba kayo, dinala kayo sa kwarto. Um, eh, binabanggit ko lang to Mark, kasi gusto na natin mapigil ito. This, and you know this, I'm sure you know that this not this will not make you a good lawyer. I don't think this will make you a better person and a better lawyer. Kung sundalo ka, siguro. Alam ko sa P PMA and uh, all the other uh, soldiering, if you want to join the special forces, the intelligence units, they teach you these things or they, 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 they subject you to these things because their profession deals with either terrorism, threats of war, you may be caught in enemy lines. You should be able to be of physical mind and body na alam mo, kaya mong tanggapin ito. Pero abogado, parang galang na lang po na yung pag-abogado, hindi naman siguro kailangan ng torture at uh, hazing. And, and because of your testimony, Mark, and we passed the law to strengthen the anti-hazing law, many more, many students young people can become lawyers without having to go through violent initiation rights. Diba po? Am, am I correct, uh, Mark? Yes po. Tama naman yun, diba? Yes po, Your Honor. Oh. So, pakisalaysay lang sa amin, Mark, yung nangyari sa'yo para at least makita natin na ito ay hindi na dapat gawin at ito ay isang hindi nararapat sa isang civilized society with uh, uh, men and women of conscience. So, could you please uh, narrate yung nangyari sa'yo yung last part? Yung sa last part po? Opo. Yung sa tingin mo pinakagrabe na nangyari sa'yo? Yung ano po sa amin po, sa akin po, nung sumali po ako, uh, gabi po yun, nung bumiyahe po kami, then naka-blindfold na po ako nung nasa likod po ako ng sasakyan. And then, nung ano po, ah, uh, Pag, pagdating na po namin sa lugar, naka-blindfold din po. May assisted kami papunta sa, ano, dun sa place. Pinatanggal sa amin saglit yung blindfold para makapunta dun sa loob. Then, from dun sa loob po, nag, ano kami, nagpalit na kami ng damit namin. Tapos, tuloy mo lang. Tapos, pagka, ano, pagkapalit po ng damit po namin, stretching po kami. Kami pong magkakabatch po dun. Then, nung sa stretching po, sunod-sunod na po yung prosesa po na ginawa po sa akin. Hanggang... Ano ibig sabihin ng proseso? Katulad ng... Uh, hindi, sorry po. Yung ano po kasi, same lang po kasi kami ng pinagdaanan po ng UST law. Uh, may knowledge na po ako sa Divina law. Since yung brother... Korea. Korea. Yes po. Ay po, naalala ko po nung nagsiservice po kami doon sa Pacific po, sa Century po. Anong year itong, uh, nang, 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 itong, itong, ano mo, itong orientation? Ah, uh, 2016 po. 2016. May mapanggitin ako mga pangalan, baka matanda mo ah, uh, kung nag-orient to sa'yo. Attorney Edwin Uy? Hindi po, Your Honor. Attorney Alfonso Versosa? Hindi po. Wala rin? Attorney Danilo Tungol? Hindi po. Uh, Attorney Arthur Capili? Hindi rin po. Wala rin? Attorney Isaiah Asuncion? Hindi rin po. Wala rin? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, binang, may binanggit si Mr. Mark Ventura kanina na pangalan na uh, Attorney Bernardo. Is Mr. Is Attorney Bernardo here with us today? He's around. Yeah, uh, Attorney Bernardo, very prominent dito sa mga group uh, uh, chats and text messages na may big brother na tinutukoy. There's nothing wrong being called big brother, di ba? Lahat naman tayo eh, kuya sa mga underlings natin. Is this the same, are you the same big brother na tinutukoy po nila? 
Your Honor, I'm not aware that I'm being called the big brother. Are you, are you, uh, Tony Bernardo, are you one of the incorporators of the foundation, Young Ages Jewish Foundation? I'm sorry, uh, the mic is not working. Yes, you're yes, your affirmative. Um, how many are you incorporators of the foundation? Are you, this, are you uh, what we call the founding members? Yes, Your Honor. Are you one of the founding members yes, of Ages Juris? No, a certain Vicente Garcia, uh, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, siya ba po yung may-ari ng property, uh, ng library? Uh, I beg to, the kind understanding of this court, uh, I would like to invoke the lawyer-client privilege communication, Your Honor. Ah, okay. Um, is he a member of Aegis Juris? No, Your Honor. He's not. No, Your Honor. That's all I have to ask of uh, Attorney Bernard. Thank you. May tanong lang ako sa kay Attorney Akende. Akende, Akende. Yung Legal Education Board, ito yung uh, creation ng Republic Act 7662, hindi po ba? You are correct, Your Honor. And one of the general specific objectives na talaga dito to train persons for leadership. That is correct, Your Honor. Kasama ba rito yung uh, pagsali sa fraternity? I mean, at least uh, in-encourage nyo para no, sa leadership training? No, Your Honor. No. Uh, after hearing all the all that transpired during the uh, previous and this present hearing, or uh, hearing, no, including uh, past cases of hazing, ano po ba yung pwede nyo may contribute to further strengthen RA 8049 and prevent thus preventing future occurrences of, of death or serious physical injury on those being uh, subjected to initiation rights? Um, Your Honor, uh, our uh, jurisdiction, Your Honor, is limited to law schools because we are the regulator of law schools. So uh, my answer will only cover as far as law schools are concerned. Yes, please. At least we're dealing with the law students here. Yes, so Your Honor. probably you can contribute uh, whatever you can para may enhance yung RA 8049. Um, I, on top of mind, Your Honor, will be to uh, uh, determine the responsibility of the law schools um, even before the accreditation of uh, fraternities and sororities that are law school based. Because it seems that uh, the uh, um, efforts of the law schools to uh, uh, regulate the, the fraternities and sororities are limited only after they have accredited it. So before accreditation, if there are already existing uh, fraternities and sororities within the law schools, then they are not subjected to any form of uh, regulation at all or to any form of uh, monitoring at all by the, uh, by the uh, authorities or the administration of a law school. So I think uh, we will have to, we will recommend, Your Honor, that uh, uh, the accreditation be limited only as far as the enjoyment of privileges. But even prior to accreditation, the responsibilities of the uh, school administration should continue or should even extend prior to uh, accreditation because they are in existent in the uh, law school uh, community. Thank you, Attorney. When you talk of responsibility, there should be an accompanying accountability, hindi ba? Yes, may sir. responsibility, may accountability. Yes. So, in what form would you... Kasi kung isususpend natin yung school, ang dami maapektuhan. That is correct, Your Honor. So, uh, how far are you going to say uh, consider uh, those accountability accountability portion ng, ng school or, or college uh, in in that sense your honor uh, the fact that uh, an, a fraternity or a sorority is existing existing in a law school then there should already be efforts on the part of the law school to monitor and to exercise some form of uh, responsibility to avoid incidents of hazing uh, because by our uh, uh, quick review of the incidents of hazing, uh, one of the areas or one of the uh, locations where uh, hazing occurs is in a law school. It doesn't happen in, 
organizations like a religious organization of students or a peer organization of students, it is uh, only happening, uh, well, based on our study, it is happening on uh, fraternities, it is happening on uh, military uh, or paramilitary type of uh, organizations in universities and uh, uh, colleges, in uh, maritime uh, institutions where uh, there are um, uh, maritime students, and in athletic organizations. So mainly the incidents of hazing based on documented uh, cases are happening in these four, uh, four types of uh, organizations, Your Honor. And, and fraternities, which is uh, existent in law schools, is one of the recurring incidents of uh, hazing uh, activities, Your Honor. And in cases of violations uh, and or negligence, what sanctions uh, would you suggest uh, uh, be imposed on, on the schools, uh, on the colleges and universities? Well, uh, on our part, Your Honor, as far as, uh, as a regulator, Your Honor, the uh, sanction, of course, as, as far as we're concerned, will cover the uh, license of these law schools, not necessarily to immediately revoke the license, because in uh, educational institutions, there are levels of licenses for the operation of law schools. There is the government recognition, which is the uh, uh, open-ended uh, license. Then there is the permit, uh, uh, permit uh, document, which means that on an annual basis, the uh, Legal Education Board uh, inspects and monitors the uh, operations, the different operational areas of a law school. Would you consider heavy fines? as one of the sanctions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. That will be one of the, uh, within the tools that can be uh, implemented uh, in a future uh, legislation, Your Honor. How about uh, at least uh, upgrading uh, penalties uh, on cover-ups or obstruction of justice? Kasi mababa masyado yung penalties sa obstruction of justice. So probably, kung merong... Uh, obvious uh, cover-up na ginagawa, maybe we can elevate, di ba? Yung yes, Your Honor. To maybe one grade lower than the main offense. Main offense, Your Honor. Which is, ano ba yung, kung capital, uh, kung reclusion perpetua yung sa main offense, ano yung uh, suggested uh, form of penalty pagdating sa cover-up? Wala na yung ano, kasi accessory after the fact, medyo mababa yung penalty. So, if we elevate, one degree lower will be uh, reclusion temporal. Uh, temporal. Yeah. And that could be a good deterrent, di ba? Na ito, nangyayari rito, after, uh, after nung nangyari kay Atyo, maraming attempts to cover up. In fact, pinapalinis yung, uh, pinapatanggal yung paddle, pinapalinis, and if proven uh, to, uh, to have committed those offenses as part of the cover up, one grade lower than uh, reclusion perpetua should be uh, fair, fair, di ba? Well, um, I leave it to the uh, wise uh, discretion of the... Uh, but you're a resource person, so we're uh, getting your input so we yes, can be Honor. guided uh, accordingly. In terms of uh, deterrence, of course, Your Honor, a heavier uh, penalty will, uh, yes. if in effect, be a deterrence, Your Honor. Uh, may tanong lang ko sa DOJ. We noticed some inconsistencies. Those, uh, kasi nag ginaktapos po na, jaxtapos po namin itong testimony ni Ventura at saka ni Solano. May mga inconsistencies eh. So, how would you how would you treat this? No, for example, eto, sabi ni John Paul Solano, sabi niya, so I was slapping him on the face. Tapos, tinignan ko yung pupils niya. It's very dilated. Sabi ko, walang response. Nag-check ako ng pulse, wala. The first time, wala. Nag-check ako ulit. Yung pangalawa, sabi ko, baka yung pulse ko na yung nararamdaman ko kasi na-stress ako. Sabi naman ni Mark Ventura, first aid, nag-check ng pulse, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and you were referring to Solano, no? when you said nagkaroon ng mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, you were actually referring to Popoy, in this case. Uh, Pasensya na po yun. Oh, oh, sige, sige, naintindihan ko. Massage legs and arms, no? suero. <coughs> and then, uh, sa tanong na yung iba, umalis na, wala na yung iba. Sabi ni Manny Popoy dito, I was not sure that time kasi dalawa po yung room nung edges juries. Implying that he cannot identify who else were present because he was not able to go to the other room. Kay 
Ventura kay Mark, sabi niya, tapos dumating na si John Paul Popoy Sulano sa Frat Live, tapos doon niya nakita si Hor sa sala at doon niya binigyan ng first aid, tapos pinalipat niya sa loob ng library, tapos tuloy pa rin pag atin kay Hor. Now, MPD and DOJ, no? Of course, ibabangga nyo ito sa facts, eh, di ba? Physical evidence and other circum circumstantial evidence. And doon nyo iwayway kung sino yung uh, mas kapanipaniwala. Assuming that Mark Ventura is not accurate or siya yung medyo sablay doon sa pagbinangga nyo sa facts, DOJ and MPD, how would you treat him as a witness now? If he's not completely or fully telling the truth, of course, uh, Your Honor, uh, the members of the panel would uh, very well delve with this uh, kind of, and this already delve into the merits of the case, and uh, they can uh, propound clarificatory questions, Your Honor. Uh, they have the power to uh, propound those questions. <coughs> and, and uh, yeah, please, please continue. Uh, Sorry. Um, Your Honor, uh, these uh, kind of questions actually uh, uh, we, we cannot as, as uh, of this time uh, uh, have the liberty understand. to But I'm just thinking ahead because pinaglalaban nyo rito na ma-admit uh, kasi provisionally admitted sa witness protection program and uh, uh, in all likelihood madi-discharge siya as a state witness. Pero kung sablay siya doon sa totoo, sa facts, uh, what I'm trying to say is hindi nyo outright inidismiss yung testimony ni Popoy Sulano as a lie or not true uh, pagka i-compare nyo doon kay Mark Ventura, hindi ba? We will have to balance the yes. statements of uh, both uh, uh, witnesses or witness your honor or the affidavits. Uh, although as I mentioned, during the clarificatory questions, they can propound uh, uh, questions yeah. which would... Uh, Determine. Very well delve into the marriage and therefore they can uh, decide it is within their discretion whether to admit certain uh, statements or not. Although as I mentioned earlier, Your Honor, since the admission of uh, the uh, witness uh, Ventura is still provisional in nature, we consider him as of this time as a respondent until he is fully uh, covered under the witness protection program. That is the time, Your Honor, that uh, uh, we would very well uh, study and analyze uh, each uh, statements that uh, he had uh, sworn, Your Honor. And since yung isang requirement sa admission sa witness protection program or para ma-discharge as a state witness, kailang corroborated uh, in its material points yung kanyang testimony, you're yes, not Your closing the doors on the possible uh, inclusion also of Popo Isolano as a possible state witness, or you have closed, you shut your doors already? We have not closed yet, Your Honor, of course. We will have to evaluate and study if uh, he applies. Although, uh, if even a single or one state witness, uh, if his testimony is already credible, Your Honor, uh, anybody can be convicted. Uh, of, of course, the quantum of evidence required in the court uh, before the court is uh, higher than the uh, quantum of evidence required in uh, the prosecution level because in prosecution level it's merely probable cause while before the court it's uh, proof beyond reasonable doubt so uh, we can evaluate or examine also if uh, anybody would still apply under this uh, witness protection or the state uh, or the uh, witness protection program or as a state witness. Including uh, all those you mentioned as included do sa, uh, nakasama do sa charge sheet, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Pwede sila rin, sila rin pumasok as a possible state witness. Opo, depending Your Honor. On Pero kailangan po i-evaluate at examine. Right. Uh, having said that, I am going to proceed to my next point. Ano? Kasi I'm also thinking of this is the malicious part of me being an investigator all my life. Ano? Yung posibilidad na si Mark Ventura, pardon me ah, a Trojan horse. Have you looked at it? Have you considered that? As Baka planted ito, hindi kaya? 
They run around. Kasi magkaiba yung kanilang testimony. Pagkas tulad yun, may mga sinabi siya rito na mukhang hindi tama. Sabi niya, hindi siya yung MI. And then lumalabas, kung titingnan mo yung documents, master, of course, meron naman siya sinabing alibay na tumigil na siya pagiging MI. No? But again, uh, pag tinignan natin yung articles, yung kanilang konstitusyon, no, mukhang sablay din doon sa pecha na pig-uusapan natin kanina. Anyway, it's just a thought, ano? And you should uh, expound, or you expand, you should expand uh, yung uh, inyong uh, kinocover dito ng yes, mga Your testimonies. Honor. To be candid with uh, Your Honors and for the information of everyone, we have not as yet received the uh, testimony of uh, uh, Witness Ventura because uh, he was provisionally admitted on October 24, and uh, the following day, the Honorable Secretary of Justice left for the United States. He will be arriving tonight, and possibly tomorrow, we will, we will be having a meeting with regards to this issue. Possibly, we will be given, the panel, of course, Your Honor, will be given uh, a uh, copy of all uh, the documents pertaining to this uh, issue. But his testimony has already been formally submitted to the OJ, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Um, so uh, contained na siya doon sa kanya affidavit. I mean, contained. Pwede, niyang, uh, pwede siya mag-supplemental, pero limitado na siya doon sa specifics, di ba? Opo, oh, Your Honor. Yeah. Thank you. Senator Subi. Ah, Senator po. Tanong. Uh, kay Mr. Ventura, um, may binanggit si Chairman na ikaw ay isang Trojan horse. Hindi, possible. Possible, lang. possible, possible lang. <laughs> I would like to ask straight from your, from from you, um, is that true or are you here to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, Your Honor, I'm not an angel, I'm not a saint, but I am here to tell the truth. Only you. Only few good men can, ano, can tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Very good. Um, that's, that's a very welcome statement to this committee. Um, Senator, I believe Chairman Senator Grace. After Senator Grace, there's a few other uh, things I would like to present to the committee. Mr. Chair, with your Senator Paz, recognized. Um, do we have a representative from the Chinese General Hospital present? We have. Yeah, Dr. Garcia, yes, are you uh, aware with uh, the <coughs> the admission of um, Mr. Castillo into your hospital yes, and we uh, are, the procedures? We are All those who, who are involved are presently here. Okay, may I ask you, Dr. Garcia, since you're representing them, um, who signed the release papers for Atio's body to be brought to the morgue? Yeah, Nadalin I agad sa morgue na at embalsamahon al embalsama maimbalsa mo agad na wala pang pagsusuri uh, your honor we have documents here that to show you the two uh, homicide detective together with the uh, funeral parlor came to pick up the patient supposed to be for uh, autopsy that's the reason why the hospital released the body to them during that time uh, the patient was not even identified, so he's patient X. So we have here our uh, documents to show that uh, the police, the two policemen who took the, the, the body. Okay. Um, do you have the names of the policemen? Yes. And yes. Um, if you can please uh, read the names out, and if they are present here, please uh, stand up. Uh, one is uh, the first one is P O one Bernardo Kayabiab. Are you present? P O one Kayabiab. No, sir. Uh, he was not invited to attend this uh, sanitary today. And the second one. The second one is. The second one is S P O one. Jorlan Taluban. Oh. So, nandito, nandito ba yung mga nabanggit? Isa man lang dun sa dalawa? No. 
Uh, no, Your Honor, they're not present today okay. for the, in the but Senate. But they're members of MPD, no? Yes, Your Honor, they are homicide okay. investigators. So, Dr. Garcia, yung SOP po ninyo, pag merong mga invest, hindi na kayo ang nag -M hindi na kayo ang nag uh, autopsy. Hindi kayo ang nag-iimbalsa mo, hindi, hindi kayo ang nagsusuri. No, Your Honor. We okay. don't do that. So, this one, Usually, you release it if there's an investigator. Hindi ba dapat yung next of kin? Or uh, actually, the, uh, the procedure is if we have patient that we know with a name, <coughs> it's, it's the policy of the hospital. It's, it's not to release the body to anybody except the rel immediate relatives. Unfortunate for, it, for the case of uh, Sir Atio, he came in as patient X. So uh, as patient X, uh, it's unidentified. And during the examination of our medical resident, that's possible <coughs> homicide involved. So it's already uh, we inform immediately the the uh, uh, the, pol the authorities. So, um, Doctor Garcia, when he was brought there, he was he was actually brought there by um, Mr. Mr. Solano. Solano. Yeah. Wasn't Mr. Didn't you get the statement of Mr. Solano? What his name? what the name of the patient was? Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Solano did not uh, supply the name of uh, the patient. Yun yung sinasabi niya, napulot lang napulot nila noon lang at that time. Sa Balotondo. Actually, it's the hospital who hold on to Mr. Solano until the police came. So who contacted the police? Uh, it's a, it's an, a standard procedure of the hospital. If any cases of possible homicide, uh, accidents, we inform the even traffic. We, we have already designated who to inform. But since the, Mr. Solano told us that the patient came from Balut, so we call up Balut Station. So it was you who actually, I mean, it was the, the, the hospital uh, that hospital. called. Okay, Gen, uh, General Coronel, um, magandang hapon po. Matanong ko lang kayo, no? so nagkaroon ba ng pagsusuri dun sa katawan ni Atyo? Yes, Your Honor. Sino uh, ang gumawa ng uh, pag embalsa mo? Your Honor, if I may uh, allow to yes, give a brief please go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, based on the records, uh, the cadaver or the corpse of uh, Horacio Castillo was brought to the Chinese General Hospital at 9.21 a.m. September 17, Sunday morning. And at 11.45 a.m., the Chinese General Hospital called our office, the Manila Police District Homicide Section, to inform us that there is an unidentified dead body now present at the uh, Chinese General Hospital and to which the policeman mentioned earlier responded to the call of the Chinese General Hospital being homicide investigators. So <coughs> at 1.30 p.m., our MPD investigators arrived at the hospital and took over the initial investigation and the details concerning the uh, discovery of the dead body. At the time, uh, the body was unidentified, and at the time, uh, he was presumed to be a homicide victim or an extra, a victim of extrajudicial killing uh, <coughs> at that particular time. And then uh, the body was brought to Arcangel Morgue at 2 p.m. of that uh, day, Your Honor, based on the understanding and arrangement made with the Chinese General Hospital and the investigators, uh, considering that uh, since there were no claimants on the body and part of the protocol we are observing is to bring it to the nearest morgue for uh, processing of the cadaver. And then uh, the autopsy conducted was... Uh, conducted on Monday, uh, the following day, at 10 a.m. by our crime laboratory, Your Honor, uh, by our personnel uh, who are present now today, uh, who may want to answer the questions. But by the time that you did the investigation, was the body already embalmed? Na embal na mo na. Yeah. Based on the uh, autopsy of the medical legal from uh, MPD, the body was already embalmed. So, can you do an accurate uh, autopsy report after the body has been embalmed? In this case, Your Honor, uh, we can uh, still uh, conduct uh, uh, autopsy even though the body is embalmed. Um, can you can you uh, clarify why that is so? I mean, di ba pag naembalsa mo, hindi ako doktor, no? Pero di ba tinatanggal na lahat ng mga parte ng katawan, ano, binalik ulit? At nilagyan na ng gamot, dapat yun. Uh, Your Honor, uh, what, uh, as what I've understood, uh, the body was uh, partially embalmed, 
because uh, the body is uh, believed to be more than 24 hours. So the funeral parlor has no uh, freezer. Uh, most of them have no freezer except for the large ones. That's why uh, the practice of funeral parlors are to uh, do uh, partial embalming so that the body will not be uh, decomposed. So uh, during the in, uh, autopsy of the uh, Manila Police District, the, the body was already partially embalmed, but uh, the organs are still intact. But, sir, yung autopsy report ninyo is inconclusive, di ba? Meron ba kayong nilagay na cause of death? Parang wala. Ano yung nilagay ninyong cause of death? The... The final uh, autopsy uh, report uh, signed by the medical legal uh, officer, uh, the cause of death is uh, severe blunt traumatic injuries, both, upper, both uh, upper limbs. That is the cause of death, Your Honor. Okay. So, malinaw na malinaw dito na dahil dun sa physical injury niya na natamo, ano to yung mga blunt force dun sa katawan? That's correct, Your Honor. So, ano, na parang hematoma, na hemat, nagkaroon na ng mga clots, mga ganyan, yun ang naging dahilan ng kanyang pagpanaw. Kasi, tama, tama po ba? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Kasi, ito nga yung nakakalungkot dito eh. Itong si Mr. Solano na medtech. Medtech ba, Mr. Solano? Yes po, Your Honor. Okay. Nung umpisa, hindi niya masabi kung buhay o patay nung una niyang nadatnan yung katawan sapagkat sabi nga niya hindi siya sigurado. Tapos, bandang huli na lang, biglang lumabas na siya ng statement na ang kinamatay nito ay atake siguro sa puso. Yan ang sinabi mo, hindi ba? Uh, if I may comment on that, Your Honor. Yes, please. Please clarify. Uh, Your Honor, uh, nag-comment lang po ako dun sa document na pinrovide ng MPD na kasama po sa case investigation. Kasi wala naman po ang idea, idea regarding sa nangyari po kay Adjo. Wala kang idea pero malinaw naman na maraming, na, maraming pasa sa katawan. Tapos uh, sasabihin mo yan? Yung kinoment ko po, Your Honor, based po dun sa nakalagay na cause of death na pinrovide po nila. Eh, yun nga yung cause of death eh. Ay, Your Honor, at Hindi naman sinabing heart attack eh. Your Honor, yung sa... Ngayon ko lang nga po nakita yan eh. Yung unang-una pong final nila na death certificate and medical legal is HCM po ang nakalagay. Anong pakilina? Uh, hypertrophic ano? cardiomyopathy po. Um, General Coronel, ano, ano yung first report na yun? Yes, sir. Our medical legal doctor. Yes, but, uh, please explain why you have two different causes of uh, death. Y Your Honor, uh, we have uh, released the provisional that uh, what Solano is uh, trying to say is the provisional uh, anatomic diagnosis. Because uh, we uh, released the provisional anatomic diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because the, the heart is enlarged during autopsy. And uh, there's uh, traumatic injuries of uh, right and left upper extremities. Those are provisional anatomic diagnoses. But, okay, we, so but we released later uh, after fall... Uh, after several days, uh, we released the uh, final uh, medical legal report with cause of death as severe blunt traumatic injuries. So what prompted you to have the second cause of death, which is blunt injury, that you weren't able to determine the first time, which is obvious physically when you look at the body of uh, Mr. Castillo? Your Honor, the, the first is not the cause of death. We, uh, we released is the provisional uh, anatomic diagnosis. That's not the cause of death, Your Honor. Okay. So, thank you for the clarification. So, Mr. Solano, alam mo, yung unang labas nyo kasi, yung unang labas mo, may mga sinasabi ko pang naawa ka, naawa ka sa bata. Tapos ngayon, parang pinapagaan mo pa marahil ang mga naging responsibilidad ng mga kasamahan mo. Kaya, isinisi mo pa sa atake sa puso dahil nga enlarged, di umano ang kanyang puso. So parang pinatay, meron nga nag-comment sa akin, nag-text, parang lumalabas pa sa iyong salaysay 
na siya pa may kasalanan sa kanyang sariling pagkamatay dahil inatake siya sa puso. Ngayon, sa tingin mo ba tama yung naging haka-haka mo dahil dun sa nilabas nilang preliminary report? Bakit mo pa sinabi yun? Uh, Your Honor, kahit naman po kami nagtataka bakit po ganun yung cause of death tapos iba po yung sinabi nila nung previous Senate hearings po. Actually po, no October 5, nag-send po kami ng letter sa kanila regarding po ng ano, uh, clarification tsaka po ng histopathological report kung meron na po sila para po ma-verify namin kung ano ba talaga yung cause of death niya. Since wala pong dumarating, dumarating sa amin mula October 5, yan na po yung ginawa namin. If ever naman pong mag-adverse yung histopathological report, hindi naman po kami gagawa ng alternative na defense regarding sa cause of death po. O, oh, dun sa nasabi mo ngayon, sabi mo nagtataka ka nga dun sa kanilang preliminary report. Nagtataka ka sapagkat sa yung pag-iisip, dahil nakita mo nga yung kinahinatnan ni Mr. Castillo, ano sa tingin mo ang unang pumasok sa isip mo na cause of death? Ang una pong pumasok sa isip kong cause of death is yun pong pre-existing pre heart niya po, uh, condition. Kasi yun naman din po yung nakalagay since yung sa medical legal is dun din po lumaki. Ay, malaki rin po yung puso. So hindi sa tingin mo, ang kanyang kinamatay ha, sa yung nagtaka ka, pero sumasang-ayon ka rin sa report. Ano pang, that's contradictory, hindi ba? Sinabi mo, Nung, nung nakita mo yung preliminary report na sinasabi nga dahil dun sa enlarged heart niya, nagkaroon ng uh, siguro heart attack. Again, di ba parang ganun yung preliminary report? Yun ba yung ibig sabihin nung scientific term na yun? Uh, the heart is enlarged. That's why okay. uh, our provisional uh, anatomic diagnosis is hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. But uh, that, is, that heart condition is compatible with life, Your Honor. Because only according to literatures, uh, Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has the mortality rate of only 1%. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Salano, when you first saw that report, you just told me now, just a few minutes ago, you said you were in doubt, nagtaka ka. Pero ngayon, sinasabi mo uli, nang tinanong kita, ano sa tingin mong kinamatay, ang sagot mo, dahil din sa puso. Your Honor, kasi wala naman po talaga akong idea kung ano po yung pinagdaanan ni Acho. Tapos late din po dumating yung mga ano, uh, certificates po in medical legal. Since ano pong gagawin kong defense, kinasuhan po nila ako ng murder. Alam mo, yung puso nga nakatago yan eh. Nakatago sa loob ng katawan. Hindi mo nakikita kung enlarged ba yan, kung may bara ba yan. Pero yung mga pasa, kitang kita. Pero hindi yun ang una mong sinasabing dahilan ng kanyang pagkamatay. Mas sinasabi mo pa yung puso. Uh, Your Honor, di ko naman po nakita kung gaano po agrabe yung pasa. Nung dinala mo sa emergency room, um, siguro, uh, Dr. Garcia, is it already uh, visible to the to the naked eye what, what the, yes, the physical I, condition of the, uh, the victim? Uh, Your Honor, I have here with me uh, Dr. Clark. She's the one who treated, uh, uh, took care, uh, who attended to Asho when, when he came to the emergency room. Dr. Clarice? She's just beside me. Uh, have, have you taken yes. your oath? Yes. yes. Well, Doctor, uh, please describe the, the physical the, the physical composition of the, the victim when, when, when you saw him. Um, when the patient arrived, po, um, the patient was uh, had, uh, we observed that he had hematomas on both upper limbs. Pag sinabi hematoma sa ating mga kaalaman lang, no? Senator po, we also invited Dr. Maria Cecilia Lim, yung pathologist sa, uh, kayo yung chief ng pathologist, chief pathologist sa PGH. I'm a forensic pathologist with the UP College of Medicine. UP College of Medicine. Maybe so we can, you can direct also. me. Then, kasi she was the one who physically um, uh, saw the body, uh, Mr. Chair, just quickly. So, may hematoma. Yes. Ano, so, makikita mo ba may discoloration of the skin? Yes, uh, there's already discoloration of the skin po. So, is it po. black and blue? Black and blue po. So, it's, it's <coughs> evident that it can be seen by the person who brought the, the victim in to the emergency room? Yes po. Yun naman pala, Mr. Solano, eh. anong masasabi mo naman doon? Uh, Your Honor, nakadamit po siya eh. 
Actually, Your Honor, um, initially, this page, um, naka, short, uh, naka short sleeves po kasi siyang t-shirt. So, initially, habang chine-check po namin, may nakapik po na konting pasa from the sleeves. So, that's when we lifted it up na kita po hanggang dito po, Your Honor, that meron pong pasa. Uh, Mr. Chair, alam mo, and, and uh, marks. I think we can get the also the analysis of the of Dr. Lim did you were you able to examine the body no no ma'am i was no. only provided the report of the NB okay so the uh, in your expert analysis what do you think is the cause of death of uh, Mr. Castillo i would agree with the impression of the philippine national police that the patient had an acute kidney failure secondary to the rhabdomyolysis um, secondary to the multiple blood force trauma so, ibig sabihin, kung nagkaroon man ng pagtigil ang tibok ng kanyang puso at nag-fail ang kanyang mga organs, hindi na gumana, dahil ito sa kanyang natamong pagbubugbog. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think it goes back to Senator Laxon's uh, statement earlier of the proximate cause of death. Okay. It doesn't matter what the immediate cause of death is. The bottom line is, it's the multiple traumatic injuries. See, Mr. Solano, there's your answer. Uh, if I would uh, comment... Oh, Your Honor. I, okay, go ahead. Your Honor, kaya po kami nag-request ng histopathological uh, result po regarding po dito sa cause of death. Kasi if ever po na yun ang lumabas doon si, sa histopathological report, i-disregard po namin yung HCM na provisional cause of death. Since October 5 po, nag-request po you kami. You have no authority naman to disregard or to, regard or to accept po, kasi it. Yung, ano, uh, i-disregard po yung uh, alternative defense na to. Okay. Senator Grace, with your permission, and yes, with the permission of our, of all, our Mr. colleagues, you know, uh, Mr. Solano, you're between uh, the devil and the deep blue. See, kung meron siyang pre-existing heart condition, not you, but uh, the others who participated, you know, di ba lalong masama yun? Kung alam mo na yung merong pre-existing heart condition, sinabject mo ba doon sa extreme pain? Kung wala namang pre-existing heart condition at namatay, Due to hazing, pareho rin ang sumay. So what are we uh, discussing here? Ano ba yung pinag-argue natin dito? Namatay yung tao, kesa kung, uh, kung direct mang uh, cause ng death niya yung bugbog o hindi, kung meron man siyang pre-existing heart condition, masama pa rin eh. Lalo masama pa nga kung alam, ni, alam na ninyo na mayroong pre-existing heart condition, sinabject nyo pa sa hazing. Di ba? Uh, Your Honor, I would agree with that. Mr. Chairman, may Mr. Chairman, kahit may pre-existing heart condition pa man si Acho Castillo o wala, wala pa rin kayong lusot because jurisprudence, this is Supreme Court jurisprudence on pre-existing medical conditions. And I quote, Amado Alvarado Garcia versus People of the Philippines, GR number 171951. The Supreme Court reiterated that where death results as a direct consequence of the use of illegal violence, the mere fact that the deceased or weakened condition of the injured person contributed to his death does not relieve the illegal aggressor of criminal responsibility. Let me repeat, it does not relieve the illegal aggressor of criminal responsibility. Kaya wala, sabit pa rin. Uh, that's the layman's term of this. It's a Supreme Court jurisprudence. Mahirap nang balik tarin yan. At alam naman natin, jurisprudence is uh, similar to law when it comes to the uh, explanation or, of cases in court. But I can cite many others. United States versus Rodriguez, etc., etc. People versus Ortega. Marami pong jurisprudence dyan. So, maybe we don't have to belay that point any longer kasi wala din kayong magagamit na excuse dyan sa pre-existing art condition. Um, I believe Senator Sherwin has a couple of more questions before I present the additional yeah, evidence. Senator Gatchaga. Thank you, Senator uh, Mix. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, want to direct my questions to um, Director Guan Hing, ma'am. Gaano katagal na kayong Student Affairs Director? Uh, for the record, I've been uh, appointed August 9 this year. August? 9 this year. Po. Of 2000. 17. 17. And prior to uh, you, sino po ang uh, student affairs director? It's Dr. Director? Calara po. 
Nasaan na ho siya? Is Nasa she USD pa rin po. Is she here with us right now? She is not here with us, okay. sir. And um, ilan po ang uh, fraternities uh, na, na accredit po ng uh, USD today? 16 po. 16 fraternities. Yeah. So 11 from the College of Medicine, uh, 5 or 4 from the law. I mean, actually fraternity in the College of Law, just one is recognized. The rest are sororities. And then one no, university. No, only fraternities, just fraternities. Just fraternities. Let's focus uh, on fraternities. So uh, 16, you said 16 fraternities uh, uh, recognized by USD. Yes, yeah, sororities and fraternities. Po, I could not say the delineation if it were divided into sororities and fraternities. But I'm sure with the uh, College of Law that there and are let's, three let's sororities. Let's clarify, ma'am. Yes. Ilan ang fraternities? the USD na na accredit or recognized ng inyong school uh, I'm sorry po your honor hindi ko po ma determine exactly kung ilan ang fraternities and sororities but the total sororities and fraternities even po after 16. this incident hindi niyo ho kusang loob na rin research kung ilan ang fraternities list, sa inyong my school list po kami pero ba may nangyari na ng fraternities sa inyo hindi ba ba it's a red flag already in 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 in, in um, at least determining whether the other fraternities are also uh, involved in such activity. Meron po kaming list, but I could not say exactly the number. Wala so ba kayong dala ngayon? Hindi po po. <laughs> the previous times that we were here, I had the list, but I could provide it. I think a student affairs after this incident, dapat to maging mas Alisto na ho tayo, yes, di po. ba ma'am? In fact po, meron na po kaming mga Dapat activities. Dapat top of mind na yan, ilan fraternities, ilan sororities. And we already have gathered. So ilan nga ho ang fraternities? your indulgence, sir. I will just have to check the number. Sige. And um, assuming there are 16, no? Uh, let's take this number for now, no? Po. Assuming that there are 16 fraternities, um, ang Aegis Juris, gano'ng katagal na siya nag-ooperate sa USD? Matagal na po, but if we track the record from 2010. So from 2010? 20, I, they could have, what we have as record as requested by the Senate is from 2010. So from 2010 onwards, there was a year, I think it was 2012-13 when they did not apply for so recognition. So operate who sila si USD since 2010? 2010 based on the record that based we on your records. prior to. Based on your record, so. And um, so 16, almost 17 years. Um, ilan po ang members ng AG series? We do not have a complete list but because what we require from them when they request for recognition is just the list of prior members because they still are supposed to recruit after they have been recognized. But even honor. after this incident, did you conduct any internal investigation as to the history of this uh, fraternity? Ilan ang members nila? Sino ba yung mga elders, the so-called elders? Hindi po. So wala kayong ginawa? Well, Hindi walang ginawa, but uh, it is supposed to be uh, done by the local because it's a local organization. Who's so the local? They, when we say local organization, it's supposed to be under the office of the Faculty of Law. Then, nagtuturoan kasi kayo, ma'am, eh. Sir. Since kayo yung pinaka, I would assume, overall uh, entity responsible for, uh, for the students. Uh, I would assume that you okay. have... Because uh, they are not recognized, Your Honor, then we could not account for the recruits that they have now. But have you conducted any investigation after this incident? Did you take it upon yourself? May kusang loob ba ho kayong ginawang investigation? Investigation in as far as... We have At an ongoing... At least the history, the people behind? We have an ongoing investigation. So ilan po ang members nila? What, members from back? Yes. In the previous years. From the history. The history since the inception. 
I we did not do a check of the members so hindi nyo prior to this year po. And uh, sa history ba ng Aegis Juris, nagkaroon na po ba ng hazing? Wala po, na, none that we know because it's supposed to be prohibited by the university po. Um, during the past few hearings, I asked Mr. Solano, si Mr. Robinios, uh, kanina si uh, Mr. Uh, Ventura, all uh, narrated their experiences uh, with hazing uh, with this fraternity. So, tingin ko, itong mga nasarap po natin, dumaan rin to lahat. No? Um, matagal na ito, 16 years, ibang mga members ito, nagsabi dumaan sila. Tingin ko, itong mga kasalukuyang mga officers dumaan rin. Hindi niyo ho alam na may hazing na nangyayari po sa inyong universidad? Dapat po kasi kung susundin natin ang anti-hazing law, di ba meron po dapat pagpapaalam ng activity, pero wala po silang in-apply for approval po. Kanina nasabi ni Mr. Emerson na madalas ang hazing sa fraternity nangyayari. No? I heard him earlier. Uh, nasabi niyo kanina 16 in fraternity sa inyong uh, college. Eh, hindi ba pumasok sa isip niyo? Ba baka may hazing na nangyayari? possible po siguro, pero hindi po reported kasi as an activity. Of course, hindi nila i-reporting hazing. Ano? But did you, did you uh, make any extra proactive effort to to learn it's, whether there are, kasi dumaan, marami sa kala, dumaan sa hazing, meron ba kayong proactive effort na ginawa para malaman kung may hazing o wala? Uh, meron po kasi sila supposedly undertaking pag nag-apply sila. And that is part of the commitment that they are not supposed to engage in any hazing activity. And that is signed po. No, aside from the yeah. documentation and aside from the papers that you are uh, mm -hmm. giving giving away, no, sa mm -hmm. handbook and everything, meron ba kayong, kayo personally, meron ba kayong proactive effort na ginawa? Alam uh, naman natin, may fraternity eh. Alam we, natin na connected ng fraternity sa Supposed to be po kasi sa orientation ng students, kasama po yung anti-hazing law, and they should know what it entails or alin po yung hindi dapat gawin. Yeah, and they also know that prohibited po ang hazing sa USD. Now, in terms of proactive, if you are referring to the current incident, we already have gathered and conducted the different, uh, uh, re, uh, it's a, actually a discussion that we conducted among all the advisors of the fraternities and sororities if only to make sure that they are again reminded of what this anti-hazing is all about and their responsibility. Kasi so po ma kung... Ma my point of the matter, uh, Madam, is marami nag-operate ng na, na fraternities in your college. Iba doon, matagal na as far as 16 years. Uh, we all know that a lot of your students uh, underwent hazing. Pero hindi ko... I, I cannot uh, absorb why nangyari pa rin ito ngayon. No? Eh, 16 years na ho itong, sabi nyo kanina, 16 years na itong Aegis Juris na nag-ooperate sa school ninyo. If I may po, um, I said earlier that the fraternity and sororities are considered as uh, college-based organizations. So under po sa college, there is someone who is supposedly uh, responsible for overseeing the different activities and that includes the approval of the various activities and that's directly under the student welfare development coordinator of the college and then so these they are also the ones who check initially the application for activities and they are the ones who are supposed to approve initially any applications and then and that understand is each yes. fraternity meron who silang advisor Tama yes who appoints that the advisor it is the college board the college yes. nag-appoint. Sino po advisor ng Aegis Juris? In the past years po, it's Sir Ar Attorney Arvin, but this year, he is, he did not sign as advisor because I suppose he has not been given the appointment. So, at, in the past years, si Attorney Fabella po. Arvin? Fabella. Is he here? Attorney, can Gano'n ho na katagal ho kayong advisor? Um, since, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, since uh, I joined in 2010 as faculty. So, 2010, 
till 2016, advisor ho kayo ng Aegis Juris. Yes, Your Honor. Are you a member of Aegis Juris? Yes, Your Honor. And um, the same question. I, I, uh, three members of your fraternity um, said that they underwent hazing. Uh, matagal na ho to sa UST. Uh, alam nyo ba na may nangyayaring hazing dito sa fraternity na kayo ang advisor? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I do not know that because at my time, Your Honor, I have, no, I have not undergone hazing. So wala kayong kamuwang-muwang na may nangyayaring hazing na Nan 16 years yun ang binabantayan no, at kayo ang advi advisor? I was just uh, an advisor since 2010. Um, six years. For six years, Your Honor. 2010? 10. 2010. So six years. But still, six years is a long time. It's one term. So wala kayong kamuwang-muwang. Uh, honestly, Your Honor, none because uh, my advisor role is on the uh, basically on the bar operations and the activities that is submitted to the Office of Student Affairs. Other than that, there's May I interject uh, with the permission of Senator Gatsalian. Actually, Attorney, na huli na kita last time. It's uh, first hearing pa lang. Yes, I already asked you about uh, recruitment. At sabi mo, yes, uh, nung nag-recruit sila nung last year, the year prior, wala naman untoward. It's walang namatay. Walang untoward incident. It's on record. And uh, binalikan kita, sabi ko, eh, alam mo pala. But being part of the faculty, part of the rules of the faculty is that before they do recruitment and initiation, they have to give prior notice. So, With, with, Lord, with all due respect, Your Honor, uh, I was not asked that question the, the first time that I'm here. Uh, it was not me, Your Honor. It was not you? Who was that? Anyway, on the record, John, one of your... He works for the... UST faculty as well. Kapili, sorry, brother. my apologies. Uh, Attorney Kapili, who's part of the faculty and part of Aegis Juris. When I asked him, Ma'am uh, Socorro, I asked uh, that fellow, he said, yes, he was familiar that there was recruitment and an initiation process that happened the year prior, but no untoward incidents happened. And then I asked him, but did they submit uh, a written um, application for that, you know, hindi siya, sabi niya hindi. At wala din natanggap, the one prior to you also said that they did not receive. So there are severe, severe violations of not only your internal rules, but also of the law. Because anti-hazing law requires uh, application to the school. Any violation of that's a violation of the law. So talagang may lapses, ma'am. You have to understand where we're coming from. There really are lapses when it comes to this, uh, the issue of uh, recruitment by fraternities. So I hope this... Uh, will clarify at least for, for legislation. And not only for UST, is the CHED here, Mr. Chairman? The CHED was invited the previous two hearings. Others, the CHED representative. Very clear that this problem is happening in schools. And these are your constituents, ma'am, no? Si uh, CHED chairperson, Nikwanan po ang, ang head ninyo. Uh, have you taken your oath, madam? Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I'm the rector. Please rise, Mona, po, okay. Mr. Guy. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this inquiry? Thank you. Uh, please proceed. So, Mr. with the Ched, well, what steps have you taken? I believe the last, uh, in, during the budget hearing I mentioned to uh, commission to Chairperson Liguana. And ma'am, we have not heard a strong um, message from the CHED on this particular issue where well, several years have passed, several deaths have, have come up. Apparently, according to her during the budget hearing, the last time they issued a memorandum was in 2000, uh, 1995 during uh, the passage of the law. So ever since then, no condemnation, no statement. Is there now... Uh, have you changed that? Have you actually come up with new rules? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Director Cinderella Haro of the Legal and Legislative Services of the Commission on Higher Education. Um, the law that the uh, CMO that you were talking about, Mr. Chair, is, ab is our CMO order num uh, number four series of 1995. And it is true that it was um, on January 25, 1995, that the commission issued a resolution or issued an order with respect to um, fraternities. Um, at the time, 
Mr. Chair, we believe that our laws, our existing pe pe penal laws, are sufficient to answer or to address the problems. But considering the situations now, Mr. Chair, actually we have created a technical working group in order to um, determine the sufficiency of our CMO and if we could impose stiffer sanctions against institutions um, which have violations of this law. When will that uh, technical working group um, uh, terminate its proceedings and come up with a finding? Attorney Alamo, technical working groups can take years. And uh, every day passes that uh, an another child is being recruited and beaten up black and blue as we speak today. It's very important that uh, under your watch, the CHED comes up with concrete um, um, guidelines and rules for these universities and institutions. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think I, I, I believe I was um, designated as the head of that technical working group, Chair. So, uh, so I would see to it, Chair, that it can be passed or it can be issued early next year, Chair, or um, next year. Thank you. Please furnish a copy to our committee. Uh, it will help us in aid of legislation. Yes. Mr. Chair, just to fi finish off, Mr. Chair. Yes, Senator Gatsa. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Santos. Uh, Gano katagal na kayong uh, presidente ng uh, student council? Uh, just for this academic year. Which is? Uh, how many months? Uh, I've been in office since May 2017. May of 2017. Yes. And then, uh, anong uh, year ka na sa College of Civil Law? Uh, I'm in my third year po. Third year. So, from first year to third year, nasa College of Civil Law ka na? Yes po. And are you a member of uh, the AG Juris? No po. Um, in, in your knowledge, no, um, your student council, I'm sure, ano ba yung student council? Binaboto yan ng mga estudyante, di ba? Yes po. So, marami kang kilala. I'm sure you're highly circulated. Um, naririnig mo na itong ages juris in the last three years of your mm -hmm. uh, being a student? Yes po. At uh, naririnig mo na yung kanilang modus operandi? Uh, I have no personal knowledge po of their activities po. So, hindi mo, may, may kilala ka bang mga member ng Aegis Juris? Uh, yes po. Um, in, your, in your personal knowledge, alam mo ba na may nangyayaring hazing sa kanilang fraternity? Uh, no po. So, wala kang naririnig kahit, uh, I've heard some kahit kwento o kahit uh, nabanggit or, I mean, you're a, you know, a president of a student council. So, um, I'm, I'm sure you're highly circulated in information mo mas malawak, wala kang naririnig? There are stories po, but I don't know if they're true or, and I really don't have personal knowledge of them po. Uh, but naririnig mo meron? Stories lang po. Stories lang. Um, again, uh, Mr. Guan, uh, uh, Ma'am Guan Hing, um, after this incident, ano bang steps na have the school undertaken to prevent this from happening? Uh, we conducted reorientation regarding the anti-hazing law among the advisors. Yeah, but you've we been conducting for orientation for the last many, many years. Nangyari pa rin to. Anything so, more, more creative than just orientation? Uh, we'll have to adhere closely to the provisions of the CMO in order to prevent. There are some provisions there. So what are the provisions? What okay. you're doing right now, yeah. ma'am, is business as usual. Eh. Yes, but based on the different uh, data that you have gathered, because as you know, we are having an ongoing investigation, there is a recommendation that we will do a moratorium first on the different activities of these different fraternities and sororities until we are able to put in place all the guidelines that they have to follow. And then, uh, anong timetable ho niyang uh, nyo ngayon? The whole year po, this school year will have to be we'll work on that and then hopefully by next year but if the it's school in year case. is a long time that's uh, a few months because anything immediate that will i mean this is happening you have other moratorium of activities po. you've said you have may, may 16 fraternities but i already have the count okay may i go back to the previous question so for law there are three sororities and one fraternity for medicine, there are five sororities and six fraternities. And the university-wide organization uh, is both, I mean, it accepts uh, female and male uh, members. So it's a combination. 
So, that's a university-wide organization. So, ito, ito, itong mga ibang fraternities, meron ba silang hazing na ginagawa? N none within our knowledge po. But, because they have their corresponding advisors, then the advisors are supposed to be the ones to monitor their activities. So, Kasi po, the advisors are supposed to be monitor. the ones, not only monitor, but from the outset of the planning of the activity down to the implementation and monitoring and evaluation, they su are supposed to be actively involved. Po. And, and, and you say actively involved. Can you describe an activity that the advisor should be actively involved in? Like, for example, if they plan, for example, an organization would, uh, would plan an activity, it should be done together with the advisor because the advisor has to go through the different uh, parts of this activity, the nature of the activity itself, where it will be conducted, how it will be conducted, should have undergone their scrutiny. But and that is when they approve based, of the activity. Based, your, based on your experience, Ma'am Guan Hing, uh, the advisors can detect this type of activity which is supposed to be clandestine? If they closely monitor, they should be able to detect Kaya it. Kaya nila ma-detect yung mga hazing, ganitong mga uh, initiation, kaya nila ma-detect yan? Dapat po. Kung closely ginagawa po nila yung kanilang activity, so yung responsibility po. In other words, si Attorney Fabella is hindi, wala siyang ginagawa. I could not answer for him. For the record, Your Honor, I am not the advisor of Aegis Jewish this year. I have not been approached. No, in the past, no? In the past. Uh, in the past, you Your said Honor. said six years. Um, we already submitted, uh, because as I said, Your Honor, there's only two major activities for the fraternity which I am involved as an advisor, and that is the bar operations and the anniversary uh, during December. So that is already yeah. submitted to the Office of Student Affairs uh, early on uh, at that time. Well, of the I... I be honest about it, uh, wala sa mga school advisors ang nakakaalam na nangyari ito sa loob ng school ninyo. And um, sa school advisors, sa school officials, and um, quite disappointed dahil uh, even after this incident, parang hindi nyo pa alam yung detalye, madam. No? And it's just business as usual for all of you. That's why I'm looking for ano, other proactive, creative ways. This is not an ordinary no, activity that they will submit to you and ask your permission. This is a criminal act. And um, I would like to urge you to um, go deeper into this problem and come up with more proactive approach. And uh, obviously your advisors are not functioning as, as supposed to be. Point so taken, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have uh, additional... During our last hearing, we had uh, Senator Joel Villanueva read the chat messages of... If it's a Facebook chat of members of Aegis Juris uh, giving different details of what transpired and what to do afterwards. But before I read this on the record, Mr. Chairman, is uh, Ms. Attorney Kapili here with us? Attorney Kapili, could you take the stand? You've taken the oath, no, Attorney Kapili? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Attorney Kapili, you were the one, I believe, who called um, uh, Dean Divina to let him know that a student had died. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, I called him, but he missed my call then. He called me back. I, okay. I was the one who informed him. Yes. How did you know that Castillo died? Who informed you, Attorney? Yung I'm sorry. How did you know that uh, Acho Castillo had passed away? Who called you? Uh, uh, Attorney Alan Agati. Attorney Alan Agati. Is uh, he here? Attorney Agati? Uh, uh, Have you taken your oath, Attorney? Uh, how did you find out that a frat member or a neophyte had passed away? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good uh, afternoon, Attorney. It was Sunday morning uh, around past 10, 10, 15, 20, 10, 20. I was at the car wash uh, and I I opened the uh, Facebook Messenger, I think. Um, I don't usually do that because it's a joint account between me and my wife. And I I saw um, a message coming from, I, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I cannot remember who exactly, uh, but it said that 
apparently a, a neophyte had collapsed during the ini ini initiation uh, the night before. Um, and that subsequently the neophyte had died. Uh, at first, I was full of shock and, and dismay, Your Honor. Uh, I tried to call up a former office mate of mine who might have more information about that because I have not been active in the fraternity, Your Honor. Failing in which, uh, I remembered uh, Attorney Ar Arthur Capilli, who I used to work with, and so I, called, I gave him a call. And so I asked him, uh, well, first he, at first he did, was not able to uh, receive my call. Uh, and then later he texted me uh, saying that if, if I, I, he had missed my call. So I called him again and I asked him if he was aware of any news or information about a neophyte having died uh, or, or passed away during initiation activities. And um, well, I actually asked him if he was on Facebook. Uh, Art mentioned that he was not. And so I asked him, are you aware that there's information going around that a uh, neophyte had died in, in the initiation before? And his answer was, um, in, in Tagalog, Your Honor, Sandali, tatabi lang ako. And I assume he was driving then. So I told him, I'm not sure about this. I just read it on, on Messenger. And maybe you'd like to look into it. And so that was basically the gist of how I informed Attorney Capili, Your Honor. And Attorney Capili, because of that, you had called uh, the dean? Or did you, did per, did you, start, did you uh, uh, search deeper to the case? Uh, you at that time, Your Honor, I was driving. Naka hands free lang ako. So, gulat na gulat ako, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, I was rattled. Hindi ko alam kung totoo yung sinabi niyan. So, when I arrived at where I'm going, Your Honor, I called Dean Divina. Okay. So, um, Mr. Chairman, if I may be allowed, during the last hearing, uh, yeah. Senator Joel... But before that, before we leave the issue of uh, yung uh, faculty advisor, no? si Arvin Balag, why did you uh, put the name of Attorney Irvin Joseph M. Fabilia as your faculty advisor to a petition for recognition in you? Petitioner through Arvin R. Balag respectfully states that so faculty advisor, Attorney Irvin Joseph M. Fabella. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, bali po yung sa petition for recognition po namin, uh, bali pinipirmahan ko lang po, Your Honor, hindi po ko yung nag... Nag-aaral ka ng law, pirma ka ng pirma, hindi mo binabasa. Hindi, Your Honor, kasi po... Uh, Yung sa petition for recognition po, ang akala ko po talaga ang advisor namin si Attorney Pabella po. Pero yung recognition po namin, hindi na po natapos kasi nga po, uh, lumipat na po ako ng school noong August 2017, Your Honor. Thank you. Senator Sibiri, please proceed. Thank you. Um, last hearing, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva had read, read a series of chat messages or uh, text messages in a chat group. And... Uh, we were wondering why there were certain pages missing. Um, and this would actually link everything together. If I may be allowed to continue the, uh, the point taken by yes. uh, Senator, sure, uh, Senator Joel, Joel Villanueva, although they look alike with Senator yeah. Sherry. Please proceed, Senator Sibiri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the first page, these are the additional documents. This may help us in coming out with the committee report and uh, the conclusions in the committee report. A certain Marvi Rosero Abo. This is a continuation. No? Babasahin ko lang po. Walang nag-reply eh. Akala ko 10 a.m. ang meeting. Nag-thumbs up po si Carmel. And then a certain Dante Acuzar Gaile Karaan added Cesar Ocampo Ona. Then Mig Inigo. Ihingi sila listahan ng mga umaten. San ginanap ang hazing? Mong de la Fuente answered, On my way. And then, uh, sabi ni RV, I'm calling on our founders to guide us the rest of the way. Hindi natin in-schedule na mangyari ito. The brad who is being held at the hospital is pleading for help. If we cannot respond to him, then we take the risk mismo na ihulog niya tayo. At yan pong binanggit niya sa atin nung nag-executive session po tayo. And sabi po ni Mig Inigo, palulubuhin pa ng media yan pag walang magkocontrol. Text naman na uh, from Mig Salamat, Brads. Ang sagot ni Alston, Kevin Anarna, yes. 
Sabi naman ni Mig, salamat. Dapat na ba sabihin sa mga magulang, kanina pa tawag ng tawag yung nanay nung neo at doktor yung tatay niya. Tapos aware naman sila na sumali ng frat si Horacio. Sagot ni Alvin, Alston Kevin Anarna, Anong update GPS sa Brad? Mong De La Fuente answered, wala ba, wala ba way para makatakas si Popoy? Alston Kevin Anarna, improving ba? Sagot naman ni Mig Salamat, di ko pa nakokontak GPS. Nagpapanik rin mga student brads kasi di alam gagawin sa cellphone. Baka mamaya patawag ng polis yung parents kasi aware na sumali tapos hindi sumasagot si Horacio. Mong De La Fuente, any update sa Frat Live? Baka nag-text sa parents, sa part, sa parents na. Sagot ni Mong De La Fuente, any update sa Frat, frat Live? Um, baka nag-text sa parents na dun ini niya. Alston Kevin Anarna, ayos na ba Frat Live, GPS? Mig salamat. Brads, patay na daw yung brad natin. Certain Sesimeno says, kits, kits, or kita kits. Sesimeno again replied, sa Kubaw. Alston Kevin Anarna answered, inform the parents na ayusin muna frat live, pero dapat may statement na tayo iisa. Di pwede sa frat live nag-initiation. That I presume, nag-ini, nag-initiation. Mong de la Fuente, yep. Alston Kevin Anarna answered, mapapahamak big bro. Tol yung sagot ni Mong de la Fuente. I don't know if we have it there, but we have an answer from Arvin Rosero Abo. See you there, brads. Alston Kevin Anarna to keep you updated, GP Arvin. Ar Marvin Rosero Abo answered, GP Arvin, please post the number of Brad Popoy Solano. Then where is Starbucks Araneta? Sa Araneta Coliseum ba? I'm on my way. Alston Kevin Anarna, yes, bro. Sagot ni Marvi. Rosero Abo, okay, kita kits Brad. GP Arvin, kindly update us on the condition of the new Brad and Brad Popoy Solano. Arvin Rivera Balag, si Popoy na hold, siya na iwan doon. Ito yung number na binigay. Yan ang number niya. Alston Kevin Anarna, dapat ba sabihin niya real name niya? Pag hindi, dapat wala siya wallet or ID. There's a Mig salamat. Hindi GPS. GPs. Hindi GPs. Ang statement daw is napulot ni Solano sa tondo. Al Alston Kevin Anana sumagot. Delete muna natin post sa Facebook. And then Ceci Meno said, What way to inform? Who will inform? Alston Kevin Anana, pati yung picture kasama si GP Alan. Sagot ni Mig salamat. Brads, on the way na ko sa Kubaw. May tanong lang ako. Alson Kevin Anarna, kaso may CCTV rin ata yung barangay along Laon Laan. Mig salamat. Paano marurule out yung napulot sa tondo tapos malalaman ng magulang na patay na? Alson Kevin Anarna, unang silipin frat live. Makita doon galing kotse pinanghatid. Not from tondo. Pacheck na lang GPs sa paligid ng Frat Live sa mga nakapwestong CCTV ng barangay. Unang silipin Frat Live, makita doon galing ko si pinaghatid. Ah, CCTV naman. May, may dugtong pala to. Baka pasilip rin CCTV sa Sir Fersal in kung medyo nakapwesto sa Frat Live. Then, Gaile Dante Acusar Karaan added Elvis Uy and uh, he also added a certain Carl Slade, Slade. Gaile Dante Kusar Karan, I added two previous MIs. They may have inputs. It is confirmed that he already passed away. Is it confirmed that he already passed away? Says Simeno. Who has the cell phone of the new Brad? Aston Kevin Anarna. Brads, please secure the tickler. Sunugin na lang. Delete messages. This comes from a certain Alston Kevin Anarna. 
Aston Kevin Anarna. Nandito ba po siya, Mr. Chairman? Ah, yun ang nanganak yung misis. Ah, okay. So he answers again, Alston uh, Kevin Anarna, baka may pwede mag-print ng anti-hazing law sa bahay. Padala mamaya, brads. Si Carmel. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Tisk, tisk. <laughs> Actually, that means... Marvi Rosero Abo, should we delete the frat page? Ceci Meno, yes, ASAP, I suggest. Kahit ito, dapat delete na. Tawagan na lang tayo. Tawagan na lang tayo. Alston Kevin Anarna, pati Facebook ng students, brads, pa deactivate. Alston Kevin Anarna answered, pasend muna updated numbers dito. Nagbigay siya ng number for Alston. Maya na natin tuburahin. Question ba yan, brads, o statement? Ceci Meno, sino nag-inform? Certain Eric Fuentes answered, question. Alston Kevin Anarna answered, nag-iikot si Ronald sa perimeter ng frat live. Wala daw nakakatutok na barangay CCTV sa, I believe, frat live. Sagot ni Alston Kevin Anarna, nag-iikot, ah, okay. Din lang siya sure sa Caltex o Fersal Inn. Mga posibleng witness dyan, mga taga-coke, Add ko si Cheng. Then he added a certain Ronald Cheng. Alston uh, Kevin Anarna, nasa frat live daw siya nag-iikot. Closed na frat live. Canteen sa tabi, wala ring CCTV. Marvin, certain Marvin Rosero Abo answers, sana kayo brads. And Alston Kevin Anarna answered, may kilala ba tayo ng police? Ano procedure, paano mag-investigate? A certain guy, Dante Kusakaraan, answers, ito text ni Popoy kay Jint. Jint, pakisabi kay Migs, hindi ako yun. Sa tingin ko si Migs, salamat yun. Magkaparehong pangalan kami. Pakiraise naman sa meeting na naiwan ako dito sa Chinese General Hospital, mag-isa. Sabihin na ang story ko, na da nadaanan ko lang to sa bangketa ng tondo. Dito pa rin ako pinahold ng polis Solano. Sabi ni Alston Kevin Anarna, Brad, di ata okay mag-usap sa public coffee shop. Meron ba pwede sa bahay muna? Sagot ni Dante Alcuzar Karaan, mahirap sa public place mag-usap ng solusyon. Sagot ni Mig Inigo, Brad, balita. Sagot ni Carmel, tulungan naman makaalis muna si Popoy doon. And Carmel answers, patay na Brad. And Ronald Cheng has a big thumbs up. I hope that doesn't mean na patay na thumbs up na masaya siya dahil namatay. And Mr. Ronald Cheng, si Popoy kaya, paano makaalis muna dun? And Mig Inigo answers, takas siya. Carmel, tingin mo mas okay na takas siya? Sagot ni Mig Inigo. Di ka na pwedeng magpaalam dun. Takas talaga paraan para sa akin. The frat will have to face this one. Kaya kailangan mag-convene ng special meeting. Sagot ni Alston Kevin Anarna. Brads, dapat masabihan na si Big Bro. Hindi Big Bro, sa Big Bro. Para masabihan niya ang barangay na sira ang mga CCTV. What you think? Suggestion lang. Mig Inigo. Para iisa lang ang statement organized. From Marvi Rosero Abo, Miguel, nasaan, I presume, nasaan ka na? We need to meet. We need to have a team of lawyers who can respond. Mig Inigo so answered, yes, press ko nakasunod niyan. Sagot ni Marvi Rosero Abo, we don't just need suggestions from Facebook, we need your presence. Sagot ni Carmel, Brad, sama nyo, Sama nyo kayo Popoy dito. Sama nyo kaya si Popoy dito. Sagot ni Marvi Rosero Abo, wag muna bro. Aparing Edong answered, saka na batch. Marvi Rosero Abo answered, kung sakaling kunin ng police phone niya, damay na kagad tayo. Carmel answered, paano natin siya matutulungan? Marvi Rosero Abo, how can we help him kung pati tayo madadamay? We need to meet. Nandito na kami, Kubao. Nasaan na kayo? Sabi ni Eric Fuentes, parking na. 
with a thumbs up sign. Answered parang edong, naka-frat shirt ako, okay lang ba? Kanina pa kasi ko madaling araw malis ng bahay. Sagot ni Carmel, dalhan kita damit. Parang edong answered, sige bats, dalhan mo ko. Alam mo na size ko. Thanks. On my way sa Starbucks, Araneta. Thanks. Carmel answered, tara. At Miguel Ventura the third punta na tayo. Kubaw, please. And then, parang edong I presume gave the location. So these are some of the missing chats that could put everything together, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. And the reason why I raise this, Mr. Chairman, obviously going back to the obstruction of justice um, that is possible and disbarment cases possible on the lawyers involved. I believe some of those mentioned are lawyers. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Supreme Court representative is here, uh, Attorney Maria Cristina Layusa. I believe you're with the Supreme Court again, ma'am. No, you were with us in the previous hearing. Yes. Um, the lawyers, I, I believe that the lawyers involved in the hazing of uh, uh, Acho Castillo and of course the subsequent uh, cover-ups are subject to disbarment proceedings and um, I believe the possible, and you can confirm this to me, uh, attorney, the possible grounds for disbarment are one, grossly immoral conduct. Yes, Your Honor. Tama po yan? Immoral yeah. conduct has been defined as that conduct which is so willful, flagrant, or shameless as to show indifference to the opinion of good and respectable members of the community. Such conduct must not be, not, must not only be immoral, but grossly moral. That is, it must be so corrupt as to constitute a criminal act or so unprincipled as to be reprehensible to high degree or committed under such scandalous or revolting circumstance as to shock the common sense of decency. Tama po yan. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The second ground for disbarment is conviction of a crime involving moral turpitude. Turpitude, yes. Sir. The term moral turpitude includes everything which is done contrary to justice, honesty, modesty, or good morals. Tama po yan, attorney? Yes, Your Honor. And followed as used in disbarment statutes, it means an act of baseness, vileness, or depravity, depravity in the private and social duties which a man owes to his fellow men or to society in general, contrary to the accepted rule of, of right and duty between man and man. Is that correct? Yes, Your Attorney. Honor. So, there are several, several cases, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, where lawyers involved were convicted of crimes such as falsification, estafa, which merited disciplinary action, disbarment. I even believe... Uh, um, pagkakaroon pa rin ng kerida at uh, all that, eh, nadidisbar immorality. immorality. Yes. Uh, in this case, uh, the Acho Castillo case, with a crime committed, if convicted, um, to conceal evidence on Acho's death, uh, attorney, I, I believe they're far more serious in deserving the penalty of disbarment. Would you agree with me, uh, Your Honor, if we can prove that, if that can be proven? Yes, Your Honor, but I still insist that there should be a complainant. Yes, I am. So yes, so yes, before yes. we leave the group chat issue, can we ask the MPD if they have this uh, authenticated already? And has this been submitted to form part of the evidence? Your Honor, uh, we have communicated the matter to Facebook uh, Philippines already, and they have favorably acted on our request to preserve all these chat messages together with all relevant uh, threads. Uh, Facebook profiles pertaining to all those who are were engaged in that chat book. Uh, we're just waiting for the order of the Regional Trial Court of Manila in order that they can officially furnish us uh, copies, official copy and authentic copy of all those messages that have been uh, communicated through Facebook Messenger and through Facebook. And if and when authenticate ito, you will submit this as part of your evidence? Yes, Your Honor. We'll uh, submit it as part and of our so evidence. And in so doing, uh, the, the charge may include the others, all others who were not mentioned by PG Catalan. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So, uh, just quickly, I know Senator uh, Grace has to uh, leave, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, just quickly to wrap up. Um, lawyers involved in the Acho case have evidently violated their oath uh, attorney as lawyers to obey the law and do no falsehood. Not only the revised penal code and other special penal laws such as anti-hazing law violated, their actions showed intent to deceive and cover up uh, the results of the crime, completely unbecoming of an officer of the court. 
where there is yet to be a conviction of the crimes committed, their gross violation of the lawyer's oath remains a strong grounds for disbarment. Any comment? I, I would like to know if who are the lawyers yes. who were involved in that chat? Yes. But I see some of them, as I heard and re read it, some of them are only the frat members. Yes. But they are not yet lawyers, so they can be debarred from their school or a case for criminal something has to be filed before the court. And what we do at the Office of the Bar Confident, in case they were allowed to graduate and they apply to take the bar exams, that will be the time that we have to check properly all the requirements that they submitted because in the petition to take the bar exams, there is a question there that have you been, if, have you been charged of any administrative, criminal, and there is a requirement that you have to submit a copy of the complaint, the status of your case. So we studied it in, the, in our office, the office of the bar confident, then we report to the court whether to allow this candidate to take the bar exams or denied his application to take the bar exams. Thank you, Madam uh, Attorney. Well, the committee report, the final committee report, will already have the names of those involved, whether they're students, whether they're active lawyers, and their participation. It will be a comprehensive committee report. I, I trust the committee of Senator Chairman uh, Lakson on the uh, um, the thoroughness of those names covered and also and just to close no the most disbarment cases uh, madam uh, mr chairman and uh, madam attorney involving obstruction of justice merely involve contemptuous acts and dilatory tactics by lawyers all the more should active harboring or concealing of evidence non-cooperation in the investigations and other acts be considered as a ground for disbarment. We're also looking at maybe amendments to the law to include an a, um, if lawyers, because most of the cases of hazing uh, are actually, unfortunately, law students. No? So we would like to maybe put a uh, specific recommendation in the law wherein when there's active participation of lawyers to cover up or to uh, delay or come, come up with the uh, uh, um, Concealing of evidence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, but it could be elevated to the Supreme Court right away. Um, unfortunately, the IBP and I've read reports, and many good individuals had sent me letters to my office and said that they filed so many disbarment cases against lawyers. Unfortunately, it takes very long, a very long time, and the uh, um, the batting average is very poor. In other words. Uh, Iilan lang po ang talagang nadidisbar. So we want to put a provision uh, with the permission of my colleagues no, and an amendment to the law wherein certain, when it comes to lawyers in this particular case of hazing, it could go directly to the Supreme Court for a decision on disbarment. Uh, the, the Supreme Court will have jurisdiction already of the case, study it, and of course, come up with a verdict. Uh, is that a, any comment from your attorney? If the law is amended, the, the first law is amended, I think the court will act on on the case immediately because there's there's already a new law which adds additional penalties to those involved in hazing. Thank you very much, Attorney. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman and Senator Grace. Senator Pa, recognized. Actually, on that note, since you mentioned it, instead of it going directly to the Supreme Court, perhaps there could be like, um, for example, in cases like public officials, if it's plunder, you can be suspended right away. Um, you cannot be attending your your daily functions, and the same way lawyers may not be uh, right away sentenced, but they will be on probation and they cannot practice um, if they are implicated. Uh, Attorney Leosa, would not that be tantamount to disbarment if your license is suspended? Yeah, the, the court suspends lawyers. There's already there are already so many lawyers being suspended. But that's already by the court. disbarment, right? Suspension. Not yet. Not yet. Suspension Not yet. only from the practice of law. But See? it depends. There's, there are decisions with states immediately executory. So, ibig sabihin, kaagad po yun. And wala hong time, definite time na 
pwede mong i-ano. You can be suspended for for life, for 20 years, depende uh -huh. sa ano po yun kasi, ng, at ng court. Attorney Layusa, kasi kaya, kaya nga sinasabi ko, kasi pag pumunta yung kaso sa Supreme Court, ang Supreme Court, ilan ang kasong pending nyo a year? 200? 100, Your Honor, thousands of, oh. even no, no, no. New the cases, New cases. New cases a year. Yes, I mean thousands or two two hundred to eight hundred. In our office, thousands per justice, di ba? <laughs> in our office, we have around seven hundred cases filed disbarment. That's against lawyers. But in the petition for review of the different cases, decisions of the Court of Appeals and the RTCs and the Ganbayan, thousand po yun. Siguro, uh, Mr. Chair, when it comes to something. Uh, that involves a criminal offense, yun yung pwedeng may preventive suspension or uh, if I may temporary add, grave, Maybe grave felony. Mm. Okay. Um, so let me go to my point. Mr. Chair, sa ating mga pagtatalakay ngayon, dahil nga ito ay para sa legislasyon, ang pinag-usapan natin dito yung anti-hazing law. Uh, may tatlong bagay na dapat kasama dito. Unang-una, dapat may initiation. Rights, sa tingin ko naman na patunayan na nagkaroon ng ganyan. Pangalawa, dapat merong recruit o may neophyte na nasama dito. Malinaw na si Mr. Castillo ay isang na-recruit dito. Pangatlo, dapat ito ay merong sinaktan physically at psychologically. At sa tingin ko naman sa mga unang pananalita na rin ni Mr. Solano, bagamat uh, paurong-sulong siya at ngayon na nandyan si Mr. Ventura, Malinaw na nandyan lahat yan. Gusto ko lang ipaalala sa inyo na dito sa batas natin na ito, the mere presence, pag nandun kayo sa initiation rights na yan, kahit na hindi kayo mismo ang nambugbog, kasama kayo sa pwedeng hatulan kung hindi nyo napatunayan na pinigil ninyo ang nangyari. Wala kayong ginawa para pigilan ito. Iba itong batas na ito, your mere presence will indicate your guilt. Second, Circumstantial evidence is accepted, I think, by the Supreme Court in this case because of the secretive nature of fraternities. So kahit nasabihin pa na ah, circumstantial lang yan dahil wala naman direct na, na nagsabi, pwede pa rin kayong kasuhan at pwede pa rin kayong mahatulan. Kaya ang sinasabi namin ay ito, baka naman pwedeng pag-isip-isipan ninyo Dahil definitely ira-recommenda namin not only your disbarment but your involvement in the case. Kung sakaling ang lahat itong mga ebidensya ay amin na nanakalap ay mapapatunayan talaga na hindi lang kayo sumasagot talaga pero kayo ay kasama dyan. So with that, I would also like to say that the University of Santo Tomas is a respected institution, one of the oldest not just in our country but in the world, I think. And not it's not just a college institution, it is actually a Catholic institution where we should uphold the truth and Christianity. I would like to ask Dean Divina and uh, the Director of the Student Affairs, who are you reporting to? Who is your principal? Dean Divina, sino yung nag uh, supervise sa inyo? Uh, well, I of course, I report to the Father Rector and okay. uh, the Have Council of Bridges. And I suppose the same with you, ma'am. Okay, the Father Rector. Um, you know, two things here. One, Ms. Uh, Senator Zubilia had a good point about the CHED. They should come up with regulations that if the institution miserably failed in preventing something like this from happening, they should either pay a fine, they should have like some sort of uh, liability that's immediate. And you can do this administratively. Uh, I don't know if the CHED has a quasi-judicial function, uh, but do you, attorney? We believe so, Mr. Chair. Oh, you believe so? We are not sure. Um, I think the only the uh, Supreme Court can decide on that matter. Because if you if you impose an immediate pen penalty for negligence of the university for failing uh, from preventing something like this from happening, it will deter or it will actually force the other institutions to be more compliant because there's direct liability on their part. I would like to know 
uh, between the both of you. I, I think that um, do you have an internal ombudsman in the school because your system or your process has to be evaluated. Maybe uh, we would like to have a letter from the father rector explaining um, what the University of the Philippines, uh, University, of the S University of Santo Tomas is doing at the moment uh, with regards to your particular office, the Dean of Law and the Dean of Student, uh, the Director of Student Affairs. Uh, what should your process be and your liability, if ever? And I'd like to hear this directly from the Father Rector of the University of Santo Tomas. That's, that's it, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Chair, Senator Gachalian. Mr. Chair, just to um, maybe cap it off, no? um, I'm really very disappointed with um, the measures that were supposedly undertaken by USD. Para sa akin po hindi po sapat to dahil buhay po yung katapat po nito. At uh, yung mga basic na tinanong lang po natin, statistics, hindi po alam ng director. And most of all, yung advisor na anim na taon na po nakatutok at sabi rin po nung director na siya ang may responsibilidad, walang kamuang-muang na ang hazing ay nangyayari po sa kanilang skwelahan. Um, this is really incompetence, negligence. Para sa akin po talagang um, ang naging kapalit po dito ay buhay po ng isang bata. Um, I, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, also to uh, continue to with what uh, Senator Grace mentioned earlier, uh, the committee would like to require USD to submit to us yung lahat po na mga ginawa ninyo, steps undertaken right after this incident. And like, I would like to urge again, no, um, the dean and also the director, to be proactive. I think bottom line ho dito, hindi tayo proactive eh. No? At uh, tama nga ho, nasa student handbook, may orientation, pero hindi ho sapat to eh. Hindi ho sapat ito na ginagawa natin. At hindi ho pwedeng gawin ulit natin ito sa mga susunod pa dahil hindi nga effective. And I think, you know, common sense, um, common sense uh, mitigation, tulad po yung advisor na linagay ninyo na member rin ng Aegis Juris, eh, mawawalan ho talaga ng check and balance dahil siya mismo pinagtatakpan niya yung pinagagawa nitong kanyang mga inaalagaan supposedly. So um, I'd like to request through the committee, Mr. Chair, to submit to us uh, the proactive um, the, the, the measures that you have undertaken at, right after this incident and also measures that will be under, uh, undertaken in the next few months. And again, no, let's be proactive. No? Buhay po nakasalalay dito. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in the area of legislation, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Castillo, we know that Atyo is gone. No? And wala nang, wala naman kayo na, anak na lalaki na sa fraternity. But we'd like to uh, pick your brain Ano ba mga pwedeng i-recommend na amendments sa anti-hazing law if only to strengthen it and prevent future occurrences? Can you... Coming from the victim's parents themselves, no, no less. Um, yes, I believe the school should be involved. Um, the law has to be strengthened. And maybe alisin na talaga yung that practice of hazing. Well, now that um, Mark Ventura has narrated the secret process, I hope mawala na yung process na yan. Mr. Castillo. Uh, yes po. We should, uh, we should abolish po yung hazing, inflicting physical harm. It is senseless. Eh. You don't need it. Eh. After going through hazing, after becoming lawyers, and when you look back, you would say to yourself, "Na, you didn't do anything for you to become good people or you know defenders of this country." It's not needed. That's all, Your Honor. And to the frat members, I don't think this will incriminate yourself if I ask you the same question. 
Attorney Bernardo, what would you propose that we include as amendments to the anti-hazing law? Input lang, input lang, para academic discussion. Uh, the, uh, it must be definitely defined in the terms of reference. Who will be covered and what are the instances that should be included? Uh, the law should be anti-hazing. Anti there should be no violence, physical abuse or physical violence, Your Honor. From the one of the frat men was to volunteer a suggestion, a, a proposition to strengthen the anti-hazing law. Arvin? Uh, first of all, Your Honor, I, I would uh, like to apologize for what happened last hearing, Your Honor. It was never my intention to disrespect the committee, Mr. Chair, Senators. It was never my intention. Po. Uh, na, as to the question po last time about the presidency po in AG's Juris Fraternity, po, uh, I was not the incumbent president, Your Honor. I am. Uh, I ceased to be an officer last August 2017. Po. <laughs> How about my question? Uh, Anong suggestion mo that uh, we include uh, as an amendment or amendments? Uh, it should be uh, defined po talaga. And hazing should be abolished. Po. Alamo, uh, Arvin, before this hearing, I, as chair, no, I was inclined to talk to my colleagues to lift the, uh, the contempt charges no, para marilis ka na. But then you filed the petition for certiorari with prayer for Tiara. So nobody wants to lose by default. So we'll fight it out in the Supreme Court. So in the meantime, you stay a little longer in, in the Senate premises. So with that, uh, yeah, Senator Biri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, final words to lang. I believe this will probably be the last hearing. Um, to the family of uh, Cho Castillo, um, may we have order and silence in these uh, proceedings. To the family of Acho Castillo, um, Toti and uh, Mini, you've gone through a lot. I seen the picture of your son sitting in the Senate President's Hall upstairs with a caption that one day, one day he could be in these halls, these chambers, working in the Senate. We lost a good boy, someone who shouldn't have died that way. He was a good person wanted to do good things for the country. We can't bring him back through these hearings, but we can try to bring him justice. And what we can promise you, this community promises you um, both, together with Nicole, is that the final outcome will be hopefully justice through the help of the DOJ, and we're relying heavily on the prosecution service. Um, Mr. Catalan, Attorney Catalan, please don't fail us in the family of Castillos. To MPD, General, uh, Coronel, please continue the work that you have to do because justice has to be prevailed. Justice must prevail in this case. And that um, in the future, with the amendments to the anti-hazing law, we can come up with a law that will totally prevent any form of mental or physical torture to these children. These are good children. This could be any one of our children trying to apply to an organization in their school and they come home with a body bag. This should never happen. And um, I address this to the lawyers that are here who participated one way or another trying to cover up, stop the cover up. Remember your duty or your oath that you had taken that you will follow the legal orders duly constituted by the duly constituted authorities, and I will do no falsehood nor consent to doing of any in court. And to Mark Anthony Ventura, sir, I salute you for your courage. Do not consider yourself a snitch. Do not consider yourself as a coward. You are not a coward, sir. You are courageous as far as my book is concerned. You are here to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. This will set you free. As I said, the truth shall set you free. Justice must prevail. 
As I mentioned earlier, the pang of conscience is the thin line that separates us between beasts. And this moment has defined you. So, saludo po ako sa You keep up the good work. Stay strong. Stay by your convictions. And you will come out of this on top. To those members of Aegis Juris, I appeal to you to tell the truth. The crime has been committed. You can't do anything about it. All you can do now is to cooperate with the authorities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Gatilian. Yeah. On that note, uh, pending consultation with the other members of the committee, we are suspending this hearing. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day.